Maryland. The Terps are 5 0. Oh. Are they for real? We find out over the next three hours. Line drive kick will go out of the end zone and be a touchback. But Georgia Tech will have 80 yards of field to work with. George Gotzi comes on. He's a graduate student, 50 year senior. His completion percentage is 66% this year, a little bit higher. This is his 17th start, his career record 13 and 3. On the Bud Light starting lineups, this offense averages about 40 a game. Joe Burns, 90 yards per game on the ground. Three receivers, Kelly Campbell, maybe the fastest in the ACC. Jonathan Smith coming on, Watkins 17 a catch. And the tight end's been more involved in the offense since Ralph Friedgen has left. Opening drive of the night starts from the 20. Watkins heading up the field and Gotzi dumps it to Will Glover, who lost three yards on the play. Tony Jackson up from the strong safety spot to knock down the junior from Tampa. Check the rest of the lineups. Here is the battle up front. Number 61, David Schmidt goal is a senior leader up front. Bill O'Brien, the offensive coordinator, said he's playing like an All-American this year. He's a great football player for Tech up front. Yeah, Roundtree, Hill, Feldheim, and Whaley as the defensive front four. Roundtree, a good pass rusher, has eight pressures this year. A run with Joe Burns does not get back to the drive start at the 20, so it's third. And about 11 coming up. Against this Maryland defense, it's been pretty good. Allowed 14 points per game. Playmakers here, Aaron Thompson, very consistent starter. 39th straight start. Henderson, their best defensive player. Leon Joe, the weak backer. And Kirk, a secondary that's really playing well. Well, Gary Blackney, the defensive coordinator, has brought in an aggressive style to Maryland. And be, to be able to do that, you have to be able to play man coverage from time to time. And they have some cornerbacks who are tremendous, very athletic in the secondary. And we'll keep an eye on them tonight, see how they do against Georgia Tech's receivers. You need to get to the 30 for a first down. Godsey's pressured as he throws. Complete to the 33, Kelly Campbell. First down and a gain of 14. This is just timing from George Godsey and Kelly Campbell. It's something that they, we've seen now for the last few years at Georgia Tech. The ball's in the air right now before he makes the cut, and you can see it's per thrown perfectly away from the defender right into the arms. By the way, George Gotze got hit right in the mouth as soon as he released the football. Nice throw by the senior. Pressure coming. You saw Campbell is tied. Harvey Middleton's record. The last record Harvey really has here at Georgia Tech. Kelly's taking him out of the record book. Option picks. And Sidney Ford takes it over the 40 and to the 43-yard line. Nine yards. And both teams will show you some option here tonight. Uh, we got Herb Street here all fired up, Coach. We're going to see option, speed option, triple option. He's a happy man. Well, Kurtz made an excellent point about Maryland playing some man-for-man -man defense. And when you play man-for-man -man defense, ladies and gentlemen, the option is the number one play because you don't get support from the secondary. So on that nine-yard pick up there, second and one. Good passing down. Incomplete. Big hit by Denard Wilson as he broke it up from Will Glover. We've seen five offensive plays. We've seen a variety of formations from Georgia Tech. Everything from a one back, four receiver look to a, a two back set, triple option down the line to pick up nine yards. This is what Ralph Reach had brought to Georgia Tech, and this is what Bill O'Brien continues to run for the Yellow Jackets. Very sophisticated scheme. Another formation, the tight end, Matt Bay in motion. Bumble the football, and Maryland kicked it around. D.J. Henderson inside the five, touchdown! This opportunistic Maryland team scores on defense and special teams again this year. The mishandled snap on second and one, they didn't get it. Third and one, you go power football, and it turns into a Maryland touchdown. Nick Novak has been shaky kicking this year. Just fine there as he adds the extra point. He's from the same hometown as Cal Ripken, Aberdeen, Maryland. E.J. Henderson, 42-yard fumble return. Maryland strikes first. In Atlanta, Maryland with a third D1 
defensive or special teams touchdown on the season. E.J. Henderson officially credited with a 36-yard fumble return after they kicked it and booted it around trying to pick it up. But the Terps lead 7-0 for Ralph Regent. Now that's Ralph Regent's best case scenario to jump out early and get the crowd out of the ball game. And he does it on defense of all things, Kirk. Defense. You believe that? Their defense has been opportunistic all year, yeah. but you're right. against this. That's their 16th turnover yeah. they've created this year as a defense. One of the best in the country. Without Sokovic, good distance on the kick and no return for Kelly Campbell. Well, let's go back to the turnover. Remember, Incomplete pass on second and one. This was third and one. As we see this, the fumble will occur right there where George Gotze does not get the ball directly into Joe Burns' hands. It goes through, and then it's all over. Mike Whaley had the chance initially. You could see Burns doesn't even have a chance. Right there, I thought Whaley recovered it, but the ball stayed loose. Now, you look at E.J. Henderson. Not only does he pick it up, but he shows tremendous athletic ability by picking the ball up and running it into the end zone. Back comes the Georgia Tech offense, now down seven. And not much with the run game as Burns and, uh, rather, Henderson and Charles Hill stop the junior Joe Burns. Tackle by number 96, CJ. The fumble lost by Georgia Tech is just their second on the season. So this is a team that really takes care of the ball pretty well. But not on that third and one. Second and ten, and Burns at the yard or so with Henderson waiting for him along with Tony Jackson. Lee, this Georgia Tech team is four and one. Obviously, with the events of September 11th, it stopped this team's uh, long talk about meeting with Florida State. So they had a long stretch off coach and lost that game to Clemson in overtime. And the interesting thing about that, Mike, the defense only had to play one play, make one play, and they'd be undefeated. They never made the big play defensively, and they lost the big game. Several opportunities Absolutely. in that game, including a fourth down where Clemson hit a big pass to go the distance. Needing to get to the 30. Gotze is in trouble and goes down. Well, he fell on the quarterback, but Aaron Thompson had a great push into the backfield, not the blocker into Gotze, and it's a punting situation for Tech. Maryland's very active with their defense, moving people back and forth. Gary Blackney, the defensive coordinator, likes the zone blitz scheme, and it's based on confusion. We see it around the country, and there it worked to perfection. I'll tell you, that was as much a coverage sack as it was anything. He didn't have anybody open. Dan Dyke kicking to Julian Gary, the senior from Horseheads, New York. Maryland showing some pressure. Low punt, they say, get out of the way, fellow Terps, does wow. the receiver, and mm. it's down to the 44, so not much there, just a 29-yard punt, an excellent field position for Maryland to take over. Well, Sean Hill, the senior quarterback, making his ninth start, 6-2 and two as a starter, six touchdowns, three INTs this year. He's joined in the backfield by Bruce Perry, 100 yards in each game this year, Lynch is a blocker, Gary's their top receiver, Jeff Dugan's really a blocker as well. They don't have a Barry Bonds to hit a home run in the wide receiving core, but they have some guys who can take it out of the yard sporadically. How about this for your first drive, starting at their 46, and there is Perry, shifty and elusive, and then delivers a blow just shy of the yellow line, nine first down yards. Well, this offensive line has certainly helped when the back has 500-yard games in the middle. Melvin Fowler, 39th straight start. Todd White starts despite a sprained foot. Georgia Tech up front, and this is the thing that separates them from other teams. They have defensive ends that you typically would see in Tallahassee in the ACC. Greg Gathers and Nick Rogers, who is physically very gifted. They need big nights tonight to be able to apply pressure on Sean Hill. After a pickup of nine, it's second in a yard. Here is Perry, keeps moving forward, and he is right at the first down mark. We'll check Bruce the measurement. Perry, the Ricardo Wimbush in there for the stop. Davis As they sort it out, Wimbush is joined on that Georgia Tech linebacking core by Ross Mitchell, who on Sunday morning was a fullback. They had to move him over because of two injuries to middle linebackers. Enki Aaron Fox is the other linebacker. The 
free safety, 27, Jeremy Myers, had a 4.0 last semester in management, one of the best students on the team. No wonder he's called the quarterback <laughs> of the secondary. He calls all the adjustments, Kirk, for all the secondary coverages because that's why he's an outstanding student and an outstanding football player. First down for the Terrapins. Hey, Kirk, we talked about this. 45 in yellow, in white, Ross Mitchell. He's been playing fullback all year. Used to be a starting middle linebacker a couple of years ago. What an adjustment in a short week for him. In three days, he finds out that he's not only been switched to the other side of the ball, you're starting on Thursday night against Maryland, who's undefeated. Hill, quick pass, incomplete. It has to be thrown outside Julian Gary. It came inside, and Marvius Hester was there and on it. Mike, you mentioned that he's coming in and stepping in for one of the more talented players on the this Yellow Jacket defense, Daryl Smith. And we were talking about it earlier. What happened against Clemson? Well, the coaches point out that Daryl Smith went down, and he is a true leader of this defense and a future great in the NFL someday. So Ross Mitchell has big shoes to fill. Turn right back to your linebacking days from 1999. See him adjusting the defense? <laughs> <laughs> Hill on the option. Lowers his shoulder and has a first down. Still going to the 21 yard line. Well, if you lined up all the quarterbacks in the ACC for a 40 yard dash, Godsey and Hill would probably finish eighth and ninth. But it doesn't mean they're not effective running the option. Especially when you're 6'3, 221 pounds like Sean Hill, number 14, is. That time, our man Mitchell over pursued the play, and Hill cut it back inside. That's why he made that big yardage. First and ten at the 22. Loan back is Perry. Here comes the sophomore from Philadelphia. About four yards to the 18. Flag is down as Myers, the 4.0 junior, made the tackle. Jack Childress is our official. Signals a hold against the Terrapins. We heard a lot coming into this game about Maryland and their offense, and they're off to such an incredible start, averaging 35 points a game. In the early going here, you're seeing a big reason. Sean Hill, the poise that he has demonstrated throughout the early part of the season, but the offensive line. You're seeing them right now at the point of attack, pushing Georgia Tech back. So no matter what call they're calling, whether it's an option, or they're handing the ball off, they've got room to run, and that's because of that big offensive line of Maryland. Also, Sean Hill, as remember, he was at Hutchinson Junior College for a couple of years. So this young man, although he's played a little bit of football for Maryland, he's an experienced football player with great size, and that's what Ralph Ruggie needs to run his attack. After the holding flag, it's first and 20. Perry was effective as a receiver against Virginia in these situations last week. Hill's going to take off and get brought down at the 31. Gained a couple of yards running up the middle. Second and about 18 coming up. Gary Johnson, the junior from LaGrange here in Georgia, made the play. You see what Hill has done in the first three games. Ralph Regan said the passing offense isn't there, it isn't crisp. It has gotten better in the last two games. And you see the balance from a yardage standpoint is there. Those last two games, wins over West Virginia by 12 and Virginia by 20 both in College Park. Hill's throw is caught by Julian Gary. Upended at the 23-yard line. Hester and Wimbush over there. Gain of nine. You mentioned the balance of this offense. A lot of it has to do with the success of the tailback, Bruce Perry. Teams now are overloading the box and trying to take Perry away. We're seeing that early, early in the outset of this football game. So Maryland's decided to have a better controlled passing game, trying to keep things short and simple, and then look for the big hit maybe later in the game. Third and ten with four receivers. Georgia Tech brings six, and the quick pass to Jafar Williams is snuffed out quickly. That ball's ruled down and a catch at the 20. Chris Young, the senior, made the play. And from here, it'll be a 37-yard field goal attempt. That was a perfect example of the, what they call the hot pattern. The linebacker came from the left side, and Hill just immediately hit the vacated area. That was a nice play by Hill, but the defensive back, Georgia Tech, was right there to make the good play. Nick Novak missed his first five field goals. He's improved. He's hit four of his last five. This one will officially be a 38-yard field goal. 
Heads to the fullback, Lynch. Not going to get there. Stop two yards shy of the first down. Ricardo Wimbush and Kiaren Fox wise to the fake field goal. So despite getting the ball in Georgia Tech territory, Maryland is kept off the scoreboard. Six and a half left. Opening quarter. Seven nothing Terps. <laughs> Back at the home of the Ramblin' Wreck. College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. Maryland goes for the fake field goal, and it doesn't work out. 7-0. The Terrapins lead. Lee, let's go back to the fake field goal. You notice the linebackers right there. Right there. They are playing fake all the way. They do not rush. And now watch the inside linebacker right there makes a great play. I can't get the first number. That, that's your guy. It's Myers. That's okay, four Myers. Point Four-point student. He was smarter than those guys from Maryland. <laughs> they thought he was going to fool them. They didn't know he had a four-point average. But that was a great defensive play by the special teams of Georgia Tech. First and ten. And no gain for Joe Burns again. So Joe Burns has tried the middle of this line four or five times here in the opening drives. And he only has five yards to show for it. Boy, the, the crowd is starting to get rustless. You know, an old offensive coordinator, Bill O'Brien, is going to start hearing the pressure and to start the booze. The more you run on first and ten, you got to be careful because this tech team spans, they like to see the ball in the air, Kirk. They have to throw a little bit more on first and ten. I We're still so. in the early going, but Maryland is just attacking the line of scrimmage. Gotti's quick toss to Jonathan Smith. Gets away from Whaley and a Conlawan, but you can't get away from five, six red shirts around the ball. Just a gain of a couple. You mentioned Bill O'Brien as Randy Starks was over there, the freshman dropping back in coverage. There he is. He's a young guy, too. Right. Georgia Tech's offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach was under Ralph Friedgen and now takes over Ralph Friedgen's offense, but tries to add his spark and spice to it. It's a difficult task. Third and nine. Gotzi's pass is broken up. Denard Wilson seeing more playing time because starting quarterback Karome Cox is injured and hasn't seen the field yet. Wilson's come up with a couple of big plays. Three and out, Georgia Tech. Well, that was perfect technique there. Mm. Sat back, waited for the ball to be thrown, and kind of twisted his upper body around the receiver and batted it down with the right hand. That was the reason why he did get pass interference. Everybody wanted it is because, like you said, he came around with his right hand around the guy. Julian Gary back to receive the Dan Dyke punt. This one a much better kick. Fair caught at the 39 by Gary. 49 yard punt will give Maryland a longer field to work with. First and 10 option with Hill and Perry. This is pushed out of bounds, took an elbow from Marvius Hester, and the flag came out. Last week, there was a 15-yard late hit on Virginia in about exactly the same place on the sideline. The ACC official is very clear. You hit him after he's hit the white, especially with your forearm, you're getting 15. I think that's the way it should be. Absolutely. You know, especially early, early in the game when teams are trying to establish a certain attitude. And he was out of bounds. Hester just lo lowered his shoulder, and there was intent there, and that's that's what they call. Good call. And that happens a lot of time when a defensive team has set their defenses to stop a guy like Perry. You know, they, they talk about Perry, they talk about Perry, they talk about hitting them all the time, and all of a sudden he gets a little out of bounds and he hit him too much. There are times when coaches will feel that's okay. You don't mind that. Taking that extra hit. Right. Well, first and ten. Maryland, a lot of snaps in Tech territory in this first quarter. He'll play action. Holding penalty. This one's coming back no matter what happens. And it's incomplete. Well, pass incomplete. Lamar Bryant had to just start grabbing as they came through the middle on him. Flag will push Maryland back ten. 
Log on and vote. Thank Florida State. First and 20. Another flag is down as Hills pass is complete to Scooter Monroe, the junior from Abington, Maryland. This flag was thrown at the line of scrimmage. Perhaps not enough players on the line. So this has been a flag filled first quarter. We mentioned Maryland undefeated 5 and 0 3 and 0 in the league. When they beat North Carolina nobody was expecting much from Maryland. Then they beat Wake Forest and improved Wake Forest team in the league. The 12 point win over West Virginia despite some turnovers and they once again another game they weren't expected to win and they beat Virginia by 20 in College Park last Saturday. Most impressive win by far the first game of the year oh. 23 7 over a good North Carolina You're team. Absolutely I don't right think there. they realized at the time how, how good a win that really was. But uh, you look back at that that was a big win. Well now we have first and 25. We're down here at the uh, 47 of Georgia Tech now back in their own territory. Hill steps up and throws complete getting it back into Tech territory to Maurice Shanks. The red shirt freshman from Hampton Virginia third catch of the year. There you see the inexperience of, of Ross Mitchell not being able to be over there and get enough reps in practice. You can see him right in the middle of your screen once he drops into coverage. Maryland does a good job of getting the ball upfield. Watch how Mitchell drops back. How he waits, looks and sees people in front of him, leaves a huge window right behind him for the big completion. From first and 25 to second and eight. They can run Perry. Cuts back and gains about a yard. Greg gathers. The junior from La Plaza, Louisiana. Fourth leading tackler on this team. Made the stop. This is where we talked about Greg Gathers, Nick Rogers, their ability to put a pass rush on an opposing quarterback. You see them really put the heat on here and try to get Sean Hill to step up and get him off his timing with his receivers. Gathers ready for third and seven. He's at the bottom of your screen. Kept out of the backfield and Hill's pass is incomplete. Rich Parson, the freshman, got knocked down, was looking for pass interference. No flag, though. And the punting team on for Maryland. One thing I'd like to mention right now, with the left tackle, C.J. Brooks, and the right tackle, Matt Crawford, are doing a tremendous job of keeping Rodgers and Gathers away from that quarterback. Those are two pretty good-looking tackles. One is a redshirt freshman, the other is a junior. As you see, Brooks Bernard's been an excellent kicker during his Terrapin career. The junior kicks towards Kelly Rhino, who makes a fair catch at the 11. Three minutes left, first quarter, 7-0 Maryland with a defensive touchdown for the Terrapin. Bobby Dodd Stadium, Grant Field, built in 1913. 88th season of football. And Georgia Tech goes for a win 400 here tonight. Pass by Gotti to Kelly Campbell to the 28-yard line. First down and 16 on the catch. It's interesting. We said that we should have more passes on first down. You call that. But up until that play, they had three runs and two passes. I didn't realize it that, Kirk. It's yeah. Kelly Campbell. Here they are getting the ball yeah. downfield on first and 10, trying to stretch that aggressive defense and putting the pressure on them. It's a very simple route. Again, perfectly thrown. Second time we've seen them convert that pass. And that made Kelly Campbell the all-time pass catcher in Georgia Tech history. First down run. Up front with Burns for a few to the 32-yard line. Kelly Campbell with that reception. Passes Harvey Middleton, all-time record holder at Georgia Tech. The senior from Atlanta who has really emerged as his two years have gone on. MVP in the kickoff classic to start the year. Ten grabs or a buck 93, the MVP against Syracuse. Kirk and I think he's been there at least six years. Yeah, he's been here forever. Just to tell you his attitude, I said, where have you improved the most? And he said, blocking. Hmm. Godsey stumbled on the way out, got the pitch off to Burns, got out to the 35-yard line. Here's a guy that, that's been here and has, has caught more passes than any other receiver in the history of this school. Sitting down with him at lunch and just saying, you know, you're, you're, is it recognition of coverage? Is it your quickness? Is it your burst? 
He said, no, I, I focused really on just blocking. He said, I've lifted a lot of weights. I'm trying to get bigger and stronger. So when I hit those DBs, I don't bounce off them. I'm actually making a, an impact. Remember a few years ago against Florida State, broke his jaw, stayed in the game. Yeah. Played the Tough next four guy. weeks with the jaw wired. Ate through a straw for a month. Yep. Great attitude. Great receiver. Third and four. On the tight end, Metvey to the 39-yard line. First down, Georgia Tech. Pick up of 27. So again, a quarterback being experienced and having a lot of experience with certain receivers. This is just a simple fake up front. Matt Bay's going to get up the field vertically. The linebacker can't stay yeah. with him. How about the adjustment to the ball while it's in the air? His own blitz. Whaley, the defensive end, trying Tried to stay, to stay with back the tight with him. Yep. First and 10 from the 38. Sydney Ford fumbled the football but got it back. Well, the junior has played significant time this year. 51 carries in five games. So he's not new to the offense. But put it on the ground there as Burns and Gazi did earlier. But that number 42, E.J. Henderson, 6'2", 243, as you said, from Aberdeen, he jumped over the pile that time. Watch him. The guy is absolutely quick as any linebacker I've seen this year. Tremendous football player, that kid. 6'2", 245. Yeah. Gary Blackney, who coached some great linebackers in his day, yeah. said E.J. Henderson's the best he's ever been around. Second and 12. They're having trouble with ball handling on the option. Kelly Campbell comes around, and O'Conlawan and Thompson are waiting for him. That will lose a yard or so. Georgia Tech just doesn't look in sync right now, and you would understand it in the Clemson game when they had a 21-day layoff, but they played that Saturday, played last Saturday at Duke, and they should be clicking as best they can all year. But remember, they, they were very sloppy in the first half against Duke, but come back, scored four touchdowns and four possessions in the second half. Right. Final play of the first quarter. Zagatsi toss, incomplete. Looking for Will Glover. They went to the same high school, but Rod Littles and company there in coverage. Only score of the quarter, defensive by E.J. Henderson and Ralph Regan against his old team as a 7-0 lead after one. Second quarter in Atlanta. College football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. With Dr. Jerry Punch, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Mike Tirico, 7 0 Maryland. Dan Dyke on to punt. Try to pin the Terps inside their 10. <laughs> Almost got there. It bounces into the end zone. Alex Terrington, the deep snapper. Almost helped make the play, but it'll come out to the 20. Those of you just joining us, here's what's been going on on the opening drive. A third and one. Fumble by Georgia Tech was recovered by E.J. Henderson for the touchdown. Well, Georgia Tech yet to get their offense in sync, although Kelly Campbell, two grabs for 31 yards, and he breaks the school record now as 166 career catches. Defensive coordinator Ted Roof has got the Georgia Tech team pursuing the Perry. Remember, they shut out the Maryland offense. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have. The lone score defensive. The senior from Kansas, Sean Hill, hands to the running back from Philadelphia, Perry, who gains just a couple of yards. Merrick Watson defensively up there to make the stop. He was tackled by number 98. Oh, the Ralph Friedgen impact. You always wonder, what will it do? It'll certainly get the production up. And here is Maryland thus far, leading the ACC in rushing, but eighth in passing. Still, they're scoring. At a very good clip. But as we showed you in the last quarter, the passing numbers are getting better each game. Hill to Jafar Williams, middle man miss. Crawled out to the first down at the 34-yard line. Jafar Williams is the receiver that they're waiting on really to become the go-to guy to help stretch a defense with teams loading up to try to take away Bruce Perry's ability to run the football. Quick drop, get it out there as quick as possible, and then you need a receiver to make a play, and there, Williams makes a big play for the first down. Marvius Hester was supposed to be their best covered tackle man. That wasn't a very good play. He didn't wrap the guy up. 
Well, you saw this in Georgia Tech earlier. Now you see it from Maryland with the fullback, James Lynch, the sophomore from Washington, D.C. Gain of James two yards. Guys, these guys, these teams don't live and die by the option, but they throw in enough option to keep the defense honest and just to let the other side know that it's there. So if they play the man coverage, it's another outlet to try to abuse that coverage. Anytime you run the option, it, it really makes the other team fear to blitz. Yeah. Because if they blitz to the inside, it's going to the outside. Second and seven pass. To Williams. This time he dropped it. He was thinking about how he was going to get around Chris Young. I already beat the other corner, Hester. I'm not going to put a different move on you, but you need the ball. You mentioned Hester. Yeah. Chris Young used to be a safety at Georgia Tech. He's been playing here for years. They moved into corner last year against Clemson, against Gardner, the talented receiver that they had. He stepped up so well that he, he's played cornerback mm -hmm. since that game. And I think he really is their best corner because he's physical and he can come up and make a play. Maryland has been very proficient, but most of those conversions have been third and four or less. Third and seven, big four. Gary downfield and they overthrow him. Well, a little coverage confusion. Chris Young and Myers were on different pages. Gary had a chance for six, but it fell incomplete. In that situation, Myers, number 27, was supposed to be double covered on the outside with Young, but he made a mistake on it, and, and Hill didn't give enough air to that thing. If he just laid it up, he might have had a good play on it. But that was a situation where they had a breakdown in the coverage, but Hill threw the right guy, wrong kind of pass. Exciting return, Manny. Kelly Rhino awaits. Bernard with a kick away from Rhino. Tough to catch. He did it the 15. Worked around the official. He got back to the 24-yard line. Aaron Thompson, the personal protector, did a heck of a job to avoid a blocked punt. 46-yard kick. Seven the return. Timeout in Atlanta. Meeting in the ACC on College Football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. This Georgia Tech offense slow to get going thus far. 19 plays, just 66 yards so far. Lee. As I said against Duke, they were very, very slow starting last week. And they come out and scored the first four times at halftime. They got four touchdowns in a row. Maybe they better get a little bit quicker this time, or they'll be in big time trouble. Because I tell you, Maryland's a pretty good defense. Yeah, they are very good. Defense. From the 24, Joe Burns, less than a yard. That'll bring that average per snap down. Only about three yards per snap for this Georgia Tech team. And so the Boo Birds. That pass is deflected and incomplete for Jonathan Smith. Whaley got a quick hand on it there. We talked about the zone blitz scheme of Gary Blackney, and that's exactly what he uses here. He's going to blitz quite a few people, Leo. Leo Joe, number 32, he's going to send. Then he's going to drop Whaley back in coverage. And you know what? As a quarterback, your computer doesn't always understand that. You're used to seeing that defensive end rush. Here, Gary Blackney drops Joe, and he almost made an interception for a touchdown. Blackney, the former Bowling Green head coach. Third and 10, big rush on. Pass is complete for a first down. Still on his feet, Kelly Campbell to the 46. Made a very good play there. 21 first down yards. He was finally tackled by Boy, I'm telling you one thing. That George Gotzi will stand in the pocket. When you watch him set back in there, just keep your eye. Forget the pass. Watch him get crushed. Right? Wait. <laughs> the other guy got rushed. I'm sorry. That's all right. I thought it's right. the other guy that got hurt. No, no, he, he was, got pressure right. still. He was pressure, but still it was on his toe. Not that's his right. head. That's okay. <laughs> Sydney Ford <laughs> runs for about a yard and a half. I'll tell you what, they were pressuring so much oh. it looked like he went down. Well, you know, he did. He, they both of the tackles hit yeah. each other, and I thought it was him going down. But you know what? He stood in there nice with that left toe, anyhow. <laughs> Hey, Lee, you're, you're right, though. You were right. His right. toughness oh. sitting in that pocket, we, we've seen it all night tonight. Maryland, even when he gets uh, throws off, he gets popped in the mouth and sits in there and, and makes the big throws. Not much running on first down, leaving second and long a few times here. Option to four. Tony Jackson and E.J. Henderson make the stop. One thing I do notice, this is an offense that's trying to establish the run more. 
Well, they're trying to establish the run, and, and Bill O'Brien told us the importance of that. They're on the option. That's a triple option. He read it perfectly, but as a quarterback, after you make the read, you've got to attack that next level. He kind of took his time. You know why? He's slow. Oh, and, well, he's yeah, a little faster. Nice. He's no, faster he's than he should And the left knee that he blew out in the Peach yeah. Bowl. ACL injury. Third and eight. Intercepted. Randell Jones, once a starting quarterback at Maryland, comes up with the Terrapins. Second turnover for the defense. And 12th interception by Maryland this year. It's as many as they had all of last year. Just sitting back playing center field. Randell Jones, you mentioned his experience as a quarterback, very intelligent football player. He's going to drop back, and, and George Godsey, this is just a poor throw. This is a throw that George can make time and time again. Has an open man. You can see that he led him a little bit too far in front, and Jones just stepped up, very naturally made the pick. Perry is back at running back and not going anywhere as Georgia Tech swarms to him, and Bruce Perry is uh, not one, quick getting Bruce up Perry, here tonight. One. Looks a little bit slow and banged up. We talked to Ted Roof, defensive coordinator, yesterday. He mentioned that they had to win the first down. If they could win the first down and stuff the run with Perry, then he could use different kinds of coverages and use third and long. Remember, I'll make this point again. They've shut out Maryland's offense. And this is the defensive tech. Second and a dozen. Four-man rush. Hill throws for Williams. Jafar Williams to the 39-yard line. 31 yards. Very interesting. Again, confusion in yep. Georgia Tech secondary. And this time, Sean Hill takes advantage of it. Hester's going to let him get to the outside, slip behind. He doesn't have any help behind there. And Sean Hill just placed it perfectly in the hole. And again, Jafar Williams is the guy that can stretch that defense, which is going to open up more running room for Bruce Perry to run. Cover two, that corner should never let that receiver on the outside, but force it to the inside for the safety. That's why that play worked. First and ten. Run with Perry. Got out to the 36. Dr. Jerry Punch has been watching Bruce Perry during the timeouts and pregame. Doc? And Michael, the nation's leading rusher, has struggled this year. He came into this game with some hamstring soreness. He had some puffiness in his knee. He also had some sore ribs, which uh, team orthopedic surgeon Lee Ann Curl was checking out during the pregame. And a moment ago, he took a helmet and a knee to the outside of his right thigh. So it's very, very sore and banged up. But he's the nation's leading rusher. He's back in the football game. All right, Jerry, we'll see if he performs at that level where he's been the first five games. Option. He'll know where to go. Pirouette. Put his head down. And got six yards. You know what? That's exactly the way they drew it up at Ohio State for you, right? Go no. down there, do a little swirl, and come in there, right? Fine. You know what? This isn't Jamal Holloway and Charles no, Thompson no, running the option no, tonight no. on either side of the football. He's going to stretch. He actually gets to the outside. Yeah. He gets a good block. Pins the defender by C.J. Brooks. And now he... He can't decide. He knows that the running back's running out of room. <laughs> That's the way to do it. Girl, upfield, puts himself in third and short. Comes they, up smiling. They should put that play in the book like that. I don't think he could do that again if he tried. Third and a couple. <laughs> Perry always falls forward. And right there, that lean may have been enough for a first down. Kiaran Fox was with him. All depends on the spot. Saw his body lay down right on the line. And Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, checking it out as well. Maryland, when they opened this season, thought that trying to replace Lamont Jordan, they, they might need two or three guys to step up. That line never lies. Yeah. Nope. And, and tonight, we might see the depth at the position because, as Doc mentioned, Bruce Perry right now a little bit banged up. We'll see if he can continue to play. But if he's unable to go, it's like Mark Riley and possibly Jason Crawford. A couple backups may have to step up. Riley, a bigger back at 6'3". He's a senior. Crawford's a true freshman. For now, Perry stays in, takes the carry, runs it into the red zone to the 18-yard line. That's 
It's our primetime game Saturday night on ESPN. Second and one, Hill kept it and picked up the first down at the 16 yard line. You know, when you're done broadcasting Herb Street, you better go be a high school coach and just run triple off. I've never seen anybody get so excited when the play is run. I love it. It's not pretty tonight, though. You know, we're losing a lot of pretty points. Can, can, you, can you tell that his dad's a coach? The triple, <laughs> the triple option is the best offensive system we've ever devised in college football. Ever? Yeah, yeah ever. Big it's, uh, uh, ever. That triple option, when run well, you can't stop it. You're right. In the red zone from the 17, Maryland looking to go up two touchdowns. Toss Kelly. Good penetration. Pierre and Fox made the play. Young and Fox got in there. Young threw the blocker. Fox made the tackle. The marker down on the play as well. Tweet. Tweet. See Young take away the fullback. Linebacker scraping here. Fox here able to make the play. One thing about Bruce Perry, and we, we touched on it at the beginning of the game, he runs hard for a smaller back, 5'9", 190 pounds, but you can't bring him down with an arm tackle. You've really got to wrap up on this guy to bring him down. Lines up on the wing, first and five. Watch him come back behind the quarterback, perhaps, here. Oh, will be the other wing back. And they run a reverse with Jafar Williams. He's wide open. He's at the 10. He's at the 5. Touchdown, Maryland. Nick Novak on for the extra point as Ted Roof's defense has given up a touchdown for the first time tonight. But the defensive score means it's 14-0 Maryland. Ralph Friedgen's return. He's got this big offensive playbook, but you got to know when to pull out the right page. He did there. They're for real, folks. Turtle by 14. Georgia Tech has turned it over twice. Both have turned into Maryland touchdowns. On the Tech campus here in Midtown Atlanta, the home team is in a little bit of trouble. Down 14 to nothing, the offense stagnant. The defense has just allowed an eight play, 68 yard drive. A big 31 yard pass. And a reverse for a touchdown with Jafar Williams. Adad Silkovic to kick off. with it. Got the corner turned at the 30 and a flag comes in. And this one will come back. Number six, Kelly Campbell on the return. Flag in the play. Well, Tech will have the long field again. With the push in the back flag. War holding. Mentioned eight plays and 68 yards. The 31 yard pass from Hill to Williams and then the 11 yard reverse for touchdown. Well, I think they had Georgia Tech's defense on their heel, heels completely here. The option look, which they've had some success with. Look at the defense all scraping this way to try to make the play on the option. They all get out of position once they make the pitch to Williams. I mentioned he has the speed to make defenses pay. Great execution, great play. And again, because of the balance of that offense, it kept, that, kept the defense on their heels. Because of the flag, drive will start at the 23. And they'll run on first down. Sidney Ford lost two yards. Henderson came in there. They've been conservative on first down, and it's led to the frustration of the crowd. Now, watch here, number 38, Nick Rogers. And you think he's responsible for this play, but he is not. The linebacker is supposed to scrape to the outside. When Nick Rogers, number 38, comes down the side, he cannot go inside and outside. Ricardo Wimbush should have been to the outside. It's not Rogers' responsibility. After a loss of two, second and 12. They try to get it in the hands of a speedster and Kerry Watkins, third carry of the year for Watkins. 
He'll get it out to the 29-yard line. I told you these linebackers are active mm. playmakers, Thompson and Henderson and Leon Joe. They're the fourth, first, and second leading tacklers on this team, respectively. And if you haven't seen Maryland, now you understand why. As active as the Maryland linebackers are, and to be honest, the safeties as well, the only way Georgia Tech's going to have success is they've got to stretch the defense. They've got to be able to throw the football and try to find some matchups with Kelly Campbell. The zone blitz. Look at the pass is caught for a first down by Kelly Campbell at the 38-yard line. That time they brought a linebacker, and what Campbell did was read the coverage, and he goes down about 15 and curls in. Now watch, see that linebacker disappear from your picture? That eliminates that area, Kirk, and that was a nice play. Good deep defensive call, but an excellent read by the receivers. Great, great read by the receiver, and Kelly Campbell's known for his ability to find the hole in the zone, but also good protection, and Gotze put that one on the money. First down handoff, nine of those on 11 first down tries. Joe Burns gets it out to the 44-yard line. Rain forecast for the Midwest this weekend. Burns turns the corner. Out of bounds, a yard shy of the first and 10 line. Looks like it'll be third and short coming up. It's amazing what success can do for a, for a team's attitude. And we've seen Maryland the last few years. They've had some talent. And this team it has some talent. I'm sure Ralph Regan and his staff will be able to continue to recruit. But this team's playing with a little bit of a, an, an aura, a, a kind of a cockiness, an attitude where they think they're going to win. They expect to win football games, which we, we haven't seen from Maryland in years. Burns up the middle, bouncing off tacklers, pushed the pile forward, and got the first down. You know, losing is contagious. And success breeds success. And they're walking around, Maryland is, with a swagger. Yeah. A swagger like they got a lot of confidence. And one of the reasons they do is this guy, Gary Blackney, can really coach defensive football. In fact, head coach George O'Leary recommended that guy right there to <laughs> Ralph Friedgen yep. to hire. I guess he's sorry about that right now. That Blackney can coach. From the 49, play action. Got past Leon Joe's glitch. Rose deep, intercepted by Okamlawan. The nation's leader in INTs comes up with his fifth. He had man coverage on Will Glover. And he comes up. Look at Blackney there. Look at him, the competitor. He's mad at Leon Joe that he didn't get the quarterback. Forget the INT. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh. That brings back some bad memories. I was a scout team quarterback <laughs> with Gary Blackney. Were you? I'm going back to him. <laughs> okay, I'm getting nervous. But anyway. Glover is able to get downfield. How about Tony O go up wow. and point the ball? They talked about the commitment he made in the offseason to be a more complete player as a cover corner. He has outstanding athletic ability, and he's physical there. He just made a great play. After the third tech turnover, the first two have turned into touchdowns. Perry gets less than a yard. Jerry Punch. Guys, Ted Roof, Georgia Tech defensive coordinator, talking to his defense here don't, during the change of possession a moment ago, trying to get them to maintain their poise. And what he's going to do now is start locking. You see him signaling the calls. He's going to start locking these calls. What Maryland is doing is motioning and formationing him out of their normal defensive call. They're making an audible adjustment defensively, and now they're out of position, and Maryland runs a play into the defense weakness. He is locking the calls from here on out. Roof, a Hall of Fame linebacker here at Tech. Pass by Hill. He's thrown away. Myers had good coverage on Scooter Monroe. Let me explain what Dr. Jerry Putz means by locking in a call. Sometimes you'll call like 54-6, and they'll move around, and you have to change it to 54-7. They're going to play 54-6 or whatever the name is, no matter what the other guy does. And I think that is smart, because what you do is you get paralysis through analysis. Yep. You get your guys thinking so much they could hit anybody. And that's a great call with the confusion we've seen in yeah. that secondary. Just lock them into a certain call. Third and ten. Down by the student section. Loud down here. Hill's pass is caught. Gary couldn't hang on after the hit, and it's incomplete. Jerry, I mean, Myers may be a 4.0 student, but I give him a 10.0 <laughs> as a judge for that hit. 
We've seen a little bit of confusion with Myers in the corners. And you mentioned cover two. two. The safety is responsible. Anytime a receiver tries to get vertical on the outside, you can tell it upset him because he took it out there on the receivers. He tried to hold on to them. Brooks Bernard gets rid of the ball very quick. He'll have to do so here. Flag down. Now you have 12 and a half yards exactly. instead of 15 to snap it. This is the perfect time to go after it. But most important, Georgia Tech will get good field position with three minutes and 10 seconds to go. They got to go to the two minute offense with George Gotzi and try to get something on the scoreboard before they go in at halftime. And a good rush on the last kick. Bernard gets this one away to Kelly Rhino. From the 49 with room to run. Rhino got the corner. To the 29 yard line. 22 yard punt return. His grandfather was the top return man a half century ago at Georgia Tech. His dad, Randy Rhino, the only three time All American, first team All American in Georgia Tech history, an outstanding punt returner in his own right. I'll tell you what that hit by Jeremy Myers did. Not only does it give Georgia Tech great field position, all of a sudden there's some momentum. Big momentum switch here in this football game and a big hit by Jeremy Myers to get the ball back to the Yellow Jackets. And they get it at the 29. Gotzi sends five in the pattern. Incomplete. Try to force it to Jonathan Smith. Second and ten of Gotzi throw. Complete to Smith. At the 17, first down tech. It's very important here that George Gotze just keeps his cool. There's two minutes and 47 seconds to go, Kirk, but the most important thing, they still have three timeouts. And that time he stepped forward. Watch him step forward this time. Analyze this. Watch this. Well, he steps, he yeah, balances there in yeah. rhythm. And it was a very simple route. The corners were back, soft. Jonathan Smith, who might be the best athlete on this football team, made the catch that got up here for the first down. Lover in motion, Sidney Ford runs up the middle, Leon Joe, first to meet him at the 15. Georgia Tech, all three of its timeouts and 2.20 left, so plenty of time. Plenty of time. And one of the things that's most important right here, if Georgia Tech can try to score, I've seen it years and years and years here. The team that usually scores just before the half, for some reason, psychologically, you've seen it. They go into the dressing room, they talk better, they listen better, and they come out and play better in the second half. This is very important for Tech to score a touchdown, not a field goal. They hand to Burns, the first back through, and he gets to the 14-yard line. That's a gain of less than a yard. You see Joe Burns everywhere, one back, full back, tail back, slot back. His versatility makes this offense tick, because you need players you can line up in different spots. You know, we haven't called O'Carry Watkins' name at all, and he's a pretty good athlete, number nine. At Wondering where he is, maybe to double cover Campbell and go to someone else, especially in this third down and long situation. Watkins not in here now, Lee. There he is, bottom of the screen. He has four receivers in as Gotzi sets complete. Kelly Campbell. You see where the line is. It's going to be short. Whoa. What do you do? Did you, you, go? you mentioned the momentum. And the attitude, especially considering Georgia Tech, this is this is the first, time out. This is the first time they've had any yeah. type of momentum in the whole first half. Well, they're going to think about it and take a timeout. 56 seconds left, fourth and a yard. Coming up for Tech. Fourth and one, Georgia Tech will go for it, Lee. The interesting thing we were just talking about, Ralph Region, Dr. Jerry Prince told us that he went over to Blackie and said. O'Leary likes this kind of play. Well, it's almost like spring practice. Yeah. You have to be very careful. Look at this. Now, you know why they're calling a timeout? See the formation. See it's the like formation. basketball. Yep. Just like basketball. Just like basketball. We saw that last Thursday night when John L. Smith took that defensive timeout as Barry Bonds hit that 70th homer. <laughs> By the way, thanks, John L. Forgot yes. to call you on that. <laughs> timeout, Maryland.
back in the ATL as they like to say in the neighborhood Atlanta Georgia Georgia Tech still going for it on fourth and one you mentioned the familiarity of the staff this is almost like spring practice for two a days with these coaches they again go four receivers and one back and Gotzi sneaks it the surge over the line first down that's the old AARP call anything less then a yard, you run a quarterback sneak, although I was wondering about Gotzi's knee, but there's an old AARP coach right oh, there. Oh, not yet, Lee. And he's he not is, that old. Yes, he is. He's, he's that old. Well, that's all, 50. Is that the number? AARP, 50. Now, watch this. This is the old days of spread them out and run it. First down, Gotzi pass is incomplete for the corner. They try to throw the fade. As intended for number six, Kelly Campbell. For Kelly Campbell, and it'll bring up second down. with 45 seconds left. Very close to a touchdown. A Conlawan in on coverage. All you need him. is all you need is one foot obviously in college football. He's got control of the foot. Comes down South. with his right foot right on the line. Yep. Good, Good call. call. In pro football, if you are pushed out and they think you might come down in bounds, Judgment that can call, be right? considered. Right. Not in college football. That is not a consideration. Timeout taken by Maryland. It's second with 45 seconds to go. Bill O'Brien and George O'Leary discuss second down. Now watch George O'Leary right give him the old shoulder there. Not so much talking, young coach. Watch. Not so much coaching. <laughs> right there. Watch it. That's right. <laughs> second and goal. Georgia Tech looking for its first points. Oh, up the middle. Henderson brought down Godsey back at the 14. What a quick first step for the middle linebacker who's made the big defensive play here in this first half. Timeout Georgia Tech with 38 seconds to go. Tell you what, E.J. Henderson, number 42, has been playing very well this entire season. And he's continued to play really well tonight. He's just going to shoot right through. This is why you hear people say he's an instinctive linebacker. He's able to understand the, the, uh, the call by the quarterback, listen to the the snap count and be able to time his his leap forward absolutely perfectly there isn't a guard stepping down there isn't a back nobody can stop him talk about Spielman William White among the players yep. defensively Gary's coach third and goal maybe more room for this tech passing attack with four receivers showing pressure offensive lineman move Matt Dorsey, true freshman out of New Orleans. Now it's third and goal from the 17. Dead ball foul. Ball start by the offense. Five yards, and it's still third down. You know, sometimes that doesn't really hurt you as much when you're a passing team because it gives you five more yards to throw the ball into the end zone. And Kirk, as you know, right now is a perfect time to go towards those corners, either in a post corner or fate. Try to get the ball where the H and the G are back in the corners there right. for a touchdown. And it, down at the bottom of the screen, yeah. you're going to see the guy that they're going to try to get the football to. And Kelly Campbell down here. Campbell and Glover at the bottom. Watkins and Smith at the top. Now they didn't want it that one. They didn't want that one. No. Now, now you're now you're all of a sudden, if you missed a completion, now it's a long field goal. Prior to the snap, we have oh. an encroachment foul by the offense. That's five yards, and it's still third down. Gary Blackney has really brought a lot of things to this defense and attitude and everything else, but it's an aggressive defense. Oh, yeah. It used to be passive, and you see the aggression right here, just bought him 10 yards, because you've got seven guys who are sniffing and spitting and snarling and ready to come after Georgia Tech. Just like their coach. That's right. <laughs> it's a good thing they got Luke Manje sitting there, because he can make a long field goal. Campbell's now at the top of the screen. It was first and goal at the six. It's now third and goal at the 22. They drop back in coverage. Gotzi's got to throw toward the end zone. He's on the run. Gains only a yard. 30 seconds left. They have a timeout. The field goal will come from the right hash mark and be about 38 yards. Now, Manje is an outstanding field goal kicker. Conyers, Georgia. He, he should make this field goal because of the fact he's done a lot of these things in the pressure. I promise you in a situation like that, Gotzi said to himself, I'm not going to throw that interception because he's a little gun shy right now. That's why he ran it and set up the field goal. Probably they'd rather have three than 14. But I think Maryland wins by forcing a field goal here. 
Maryland wins this part. Wins the battle. Wins the battle. Wins the battle. Doesn't win the war, but they win the battle right here. You mean this first and goal that has taken oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. 15 minutes with all five timeouts taken? Five of six taken, I should say. Maryland on defense has it's had three turnovers. They sacked Godsey twice, and they held Tech to 3.2 yards per snap. Per snap. That means pretty run good and or pass. Marty, that's a great that? one. No, Marty. Marty, Marty, Marty Aronoff. Or? Marty Aronoff. He's the best. Of all time. Stat man. <laughs> but that's a great stat. When you can only yes, have 3.2 as an offensive firepower team with all those great talented athletes, that's a great job on defense. Here is Manje in Maryland. We'll try to freeze him by taking. Let's see. Did they take a timeout or they just have an issue with the football here? Oh, yeah. The yep, Maryland did job. try the when freeze he, timeout. And he was all six. <laughs> timeout, Can't take him with you, buddy. No, I'll take him with you. That's right. 37 yard field goal is no good. Maryland really wins the half now. Omanje, usually dependable. Usually. 9 of 10 this year, 32 of 42 in his career. Missed that one. Maryland gets the ball first. Georgia Tech was not shut out in the first half all of last season. They were here in Rich Eisen. Maryland leads by 14. Maryland has lost 33 straight games to ranked teams. 1990 against Virginia, their last win over a ranked team. But they lead in Atlanta 14-0 as we start the third quarter. Luke Manje missed the field goal at the end of the first half and is set to kick off. A deep boot. Unreturnable. Touchback. Terps will start at the 20. ESPN Game Track, those of you who are just joining us tonight. George Gotzi has been pressured for two INTs, now five on the season. Four. First half for Gotsi. It was a great call. They kept running the option, option, then they pitched it on reverse play to Jafar Williams, 6-2-201 for Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Well, the reason Maryland's winning is because their defense, led by the junior E.J. Henderson, the middle linebacker, number one tackler on the team, and you could see he's off to a great start here in tonight's game. Phenomenal 12 tackles. First down toss to Bruce Perry. He runs well across the 30 and two, the 36-yard line. Perry. Banged up, slowed, 10 carries, 29 yards, first half. Big start to the second. Let me check the numbers here in the first 30 minutes. And you see Georgia Tech's offense, 3.2 per play and three turnovers. Only, Maryland only five point with 14 points. They've already got really one touchdown on the defense. After gaining 17. Three for Perry to the 40. Good point, Lee. E.J. Henderson had the first touchdown on a fumble yeah. return. Let's go check in with Dr. Jerry Punch down on the sideline. Guys, at halftime in the Maryland locker room, I saw a very, very uh, hungry football team play with a lot of confidence. And uh, Ralph Freaky, that man might look like a veteran head coach instead of a first-year head coach. Talked about his defense on tackling one in the second quarter. Got to run the football. Offensively, wants to run the football. He said, guys, we run the football and don't have penalties. Tonight, the nation will see a coming out party for Terrapin football. Seen half of it already. Hill to throw intercepted by Jeremy Myers. I just happened to be looking at Myers as Hill was dropping back. He was looking right to the receiver. Myers sees the same thing that we saw up here. He makes his read, and once you see that tight end go out, and he's assigned to the tight end, he cut up field and jumped right in front of it to make a big play for Tech. Gotsi and the Yellow Jackets to the air with Jonathan Smith. Six yards to the 35-yard line. Jerry, what was going on with George O'Leary and the Jackets? Well, talked about offense trying to move the football. He said we're going to go with a lot of two tight end sets. It's going to be physical up front with both tight ends. Give Godsey some time to throw the football. Might see a little more option here in the second half. Guys. We'll watch for the two tight ends. John Paul Fossey, the other tight end. With Matt Fay. Godsey pumping and looking in zone. Incomplete for Kelly Campbell. 
I like the play call, the play calling here in the first couple plays. You know, they're averaging less than two yards per run on first and 10 in the first half, putting them in second and third and long, and now you're at a disadvantage. Here, early in this, this uh, first couple plays, they come out, throw a simple hitch, and then the hitch and go, just to try to slow down Gary Blackney and the Maryland defense from continuing to attack that line of scrimmage. Third and a long three. Yeah. See that aggressive Maryland defense. They back out, bring four. Dodsey's underneath pass is intercepted on the deflection. Leon Joe. The fourth Georgia Tech turnover. Godsey has many interceptions in the first 32 and a half minutes as he had all season. Pass intercepted. One of the interesting points about coaching is the first six minutes of the second half usually determines the momentum. And right now, you can tell the Maryland sideline, the Georgia Tech sideline is down. The Maryland sideline has helped. Now, that was a bad break because it really wasn't a bad pass. It was just luck. But let me tell you something, luck or not, the momentum right now is with Maryland. And if they could get one right now, it's good night, sweetheart. Really? Yes, sir. They get up 21 to win this game. Rich Parson, 22, is in the game. This is Parson blocking Hill, has nobody to pitch it to. He's taken down at the 37-yard line. That's a good triple option, except they don't have anybody to pitch it to. <laughs> well, so that's a triple option that turns into a one option. That's right. Now, now Eric Crouch can run that to perfection. Yes, yes but <laughs> this isn't Eric Crouch. Sean Hill, though, there, he, he good recognition. A lot of times a quarterback will make the pitch without seeing the pitch back. How about Kansas State, yeah. Oklahoma? And there, he, right before he released it, he recognized the back one there and tucked it up underneath. Boy, the mistake. Second and nine pass. Comes back to the fullback, Lynch, he dropped it. Has one pass on the year. Sophomore from Washington, D.C. Did not hang on. You know, you talk about Parsons, uh, rather Hill, he's from Parsons, Kansas. Same hometown as uh, somebody who's familiar in the ACC lore, Hill Guthridge. Replaced Dean Smith at North Carolina as a basketball coach. He went to junior college because he was a pure option quarterback in high school. So he needed to learn how to throw the ball more. Then came to Maryland, started a few games last year, full-time starter this year. They say his greatest attribute is his calm demeanor and his decision-making. Third and eight, incomplete. It was kind of nudged and hit as he threw, and he wanted a face mask call, but it didn't come. The pressure came from Gathers. But you know, it's interesting. We haven't had Gathers or Rodgers with a sack yet. So those two offensive tackles, Brooks and Crawford, are doing a nice job on those two ends. That and, and you got to credit Charlie Taft for getting the three-step and five-step drops and getting rid of the football yeah. very, very fast. It's tough for Rodgers and Gathers to get in there. That was a big stop by Georgia Tech's defense. Absolutely. Brooks, Bernard, punt pressure coming. Maryland's been very sound in punt protecting tonight. And a hard-to-return punt especially when it goes out of bounds. Long field, 41-yard kick. Fans are ready to make some noise. The offense hasn't helped them in that cause. We are in midtown Atlanta, Georgia. Very vibrant city. Has hosted everything. Super Bowl, Olympics, Final Four will be at the Georgia Dome at the end of uh, the basketball season which starts around the country this weekend with practice. A lot of midnight madness midnight tomorrow madness. and Saturday. And good luck to all the college basketball players and coaches as they get set for their first steps on the road to Atlanta. Here, 14-0 Maryland. First down pass is complete to Kelly Campbell, who lost the football. And do you believe a fifth turnover? It's in the hands of Randall Jones, who has blockers, and is taken down by Godsey, and then the rest of the offense at the 31. Georgia Tech turned it over seven times in the first five games, and they turned it over five times in the first 33 minutes tonight. Great call. Everything oh, yeah. is executed perfectly. Ball's thrown right there. Campbell's trying to make a play, and Maryland's stripping the football. Tony O'Connor. Yep. Ball goes down, and they're, I mean, they're all over these Georgia Tech receivers and ball carriers. Remember what Gary Blackman told us during the week. Everybody works on strip drills, getting the ball out. We've really worked hard at it. The kids bought in. Perry with the run. Gains a yard. Yard.
yards have been tough to come by in the ground game tonight, both ways. Five turnovers. Wow. That's 20 now in the season, which is... Now, they've given, given up a few yards, but they don't allow teams to score. Only 14 a game coming in, and they create turnovers. Officially no gain, second and ten. Swing to Perry with blockers. The yard shy of the first down. Marker down as well. Right at the point where Perry went out of bounds come back from the spot. Maryland has great field position. Five turnovers tonight. Gary Blackney, the defensive coordinator. 20 takeaways now with five tonight. Does lead the NCAA. Now teams haven't played this weekend, obviously coming up, but that's still phenomenal. And that's his aggressive style. That's what he believes in. We mentioned former Bowling Green head coach for a decade there. Charlie Taft, the offensive coordinator, was a head coach at the Citadel and also a head coach in Montreal of the CFL. You put Ralph, Charlie, and Blackie together, and they're the fifth oldest staff in America. In terms of experience, experience for head coach experience. and coordinator. That's right, fifth. Obviously, I think Joe Paterno is number one. I mean, has to be. Second and 12 after the flag. Hill will run and get them into a third and short situation. You know what this hill reminds me of? A guy I saw in Oklahoma last week named Jason White. He's just kind of a big, tall guy, 6'3", 220. But you know what? That guy, Kirk, is quick. Did you see the way he covered that ground when he decided to run? Well, he got a field in a hurry. Oh, He's I'm much done. quicker than you realize. Much quicker. The thing that I, I like about him is he makes good decisions. He's, He's not going to, in most cases, put his team in a bad situation there instead of throwing it away and being second real long. Now it's just third and two. You can run or pass here. Option, first down and more. That's it. To the 16-yard line. I like what you said, Kirk. Decisive. You, know, you don't have to be the fastest player if you make the correct decision early enough. But one thing about him also, he is, he is absolutely outplaying the great George Gotzi today because he's doing everything right. He comes down on line of scrimmage, he plants that foot right now, and at 6'3", 221, he's a load to tackle. You know what, that is a design play. You saw the momentum of the defenders yeah. going one way. The linemen just kept pushing him that way, and he had the presence of mind to cut back underneath that and pick up the first one. From the 16, Perry. Yard to the 15, Jerry Punch. The guys, last night at the Maryland Hotel, we talked to Ralph Friedgen and his players. And Sean Hill told us the big difference in this team this year is the intensity with which they practice. So we practice with so much intensity, and uh, Coach Friedgen charts everything. He keeps stats on completions, incompletions, how many yards on the auction, how many yards running. So if we get to the game, the pressure is off. We have so much pressure in practice, we get to relax and we can execute in the football game, and we are a much better football team. Ralph thought they were having a bad week this week, but then looked at the numbers, and Hill was 83%. In practice, that pass is incomplete intended for Jafar Williams. Ralph said, I realized how uptight I was. I was on the kids this week, and I turned around and looked at the numbers, and Hill was 83%. Those are the numbers they had when Joe Hamilton was at Georgia Tech. I want you to look at his picture, and I didn't realize this. Ralph Regent does not call the offensive plays. Charlie Taffy does. I thought this is the Ralph Regent who's calling the plays and making all the major decisions, but he's not. That guy right there, Charlie Taffy's calling. I'm, I'm sure Ralph has given him some help, but I thought he was calling every play. He's not. Hasn't nope. jumped in yet this year. Third and nine. Incomplete. Trying to get his tight end, Matt Murphy, who's only caught a couple of balls all year. It'll bring up fourth down and a 32-yard field goal attempt for Novak. Remember, they had a fake field goal that was stopped as Lynch ran a couple of yards short. This will be the first attempt of the night for Novak. 32. Missed it right. Four of 11 field goals on the year. It is the one part of this team that is not held up for Ralph Friedman. Georgia Tech, got a break there.
Centennial Park in Atlanta. Great way to remember the good and the things that are remembered for other reasons from the 96 Summer Olympics in Atlanta, Georgia. Here it's 14-0 Maryland. And there is so far the defensive player of the night, E.J. Henderson, nine un six unassisted tackles, six assisted tackles, a fumble recovery for a touchdown, one sack, a two-yard loss, and I'm telling you, the guy's all over the place. Gotsy fakes the option, drives it off top, and there's the receiver open to midfield with Kerry Watkins. 30 yards. First time that Kerry Watson's had a chance. Looks like they're going to roll coverage into that Campbell. And what do you think in the slot, Kerry? Kerry Watson in the slot, Watkins. That's right. They put him in a slot, and they have option action. Look at the fake down the line. Kind of dips down to hide himself. And now you've got a mismatch there. If he leads him a little bit, he's probably still running for a touchdown. Tony Jackson, strong safety. Not going to yeah, catch no way. From midfield. Back to the air on first down. And complete to Kelly Campbell. Pick up of about four. Even though we expect George Godsey to just be very, very accurate every time he goes out and plays and be very effective. We have to remember that as, as intelligent as he is, they call him a computer out there on the field. He's still relatively young as far as a st his starting experience. So it's okay for him to kind of go up and down with his accuracy. He just needs to find his rhythm to give Tech's offense a chance. Jerome Cox, who didn't start because of injury, is in after Denard Wilson just got hurt. Gotsy with time, throws incomplete. Coverage was good all around there. Pass intended for number six, Kelly Campbell. I think Maryland's defense is doing more than shutting Georgia Tech down. They're, they're keeping Godsey out of rhythm. Watch his drop here. He's trying to look over his left shoulder. He nearly falls down, dropping back. And again, as soon as he gets rid of the football, he's hit by 55 Mike Whalen. Needing to get just past the 40. Coming, Gotsy gets rid of it to Glover. Will Glover got a first down. Glover was in the same high school as Gotsy, Jesuit High School in Tampa. They were there together for one year. They're going to bring another blitz here, this time from the outside. And watch George Gotsy feel this coming right into his face. As soon as he gets rid of the football, he gets hit again. And this is the athletic ability of Glover. They feel that he potentially could be the greatest receiver that they have here on this roster a long time. First down play action. Gotti looking deep for Smith. Incomplete. Well, Tony Oconrawan has been is all over. blanketing receivers. And you have to go back to last year. Oconrawan was the most maligned Maryland Terrapin of them all. As a matter of fact, when Ralph Friedman was going around talking to boosters and fans getting them interested in this year's Maryland team they'd all ask oh, what about a Conroy you can't play him he, he, and he was getting criticized by fans in the offseason to see the way the guy has come back yeah. an interception here tonight leads the nation in INTs is a great story for the senior he's from Damatha High School which is one of the great high schools in around that Maryland area great basketball plus football Morgan Wooten legendary coach Henderson the pressure the pass underneath to Watkins that's a completion at the 35, a pickup of four yards, and Georgia Tech is becoming exclusively a passing team. I think that sounds good, but in my opinion, they better do something to keep that pressure off of Gotsi, because our guy, E.J. Henderson, cracked him again, and he's not going to get up after one of these hits, because he's getting hit a lot. they got to do something like a run or a yeah. swing. Keep the pressure draw. Well, they something. only have 24 runs for 26 yards tonight. Yeah, but at least you can keep their pass rush down. I right? understand. I understand. 35. Four wide. Now see, pressure, put it up. Incomplete for Glover. And again, you can't blame Godsey for <laughs> not getting it out to the right spot because he was going down. Might go for it here on fourth down, guys. Godsey's going to get hit again here, Kurt, because of the pressure. Now, watch it do a little twist in the line. Boom. Remember, 
defensive coaches will tell you, not only do they want to sack the quarterback, but every time they hit him, they think that's a win, don't they? You sure do. You get the quarterback starting to feel the pressure exactly. instead of focusing downfield. And they've hit him. They've thrown 11 straight passes. He's probably been hit 11 straight times. Going for it on fourth down. Well, he jumped. Gotsy sneaks it and runs it forward for the first down. The markers did come down. The quick snap to induce the offside, and they got it on the run. That's what they call a safe play and a free play, because as soon as he snapped the ball, they jumped offside. It's a free play. He automatically ran a quarterback sneak. That's a good, well-coached football team that does that occasionally. It's also a good job by the center, David Schmidtko. Centers, centers are caught, but as soon as you see a defensive player jump offside, right. snap the ball back, and the quarterback's got to be ready to secure the football. Schmidt, Gall, and Godsey, very close friends, obviously quarterback centers, spend a lot of time together, or play uh, college football video games. They wanted to ask you guys about video oh, games yeah. yesterday, oh, yeah. comments you make on game day, they're really close. Godsey firing to the 12, Kelly Campbell. At 16 yards. Outside of the quarterback sneak, everything has been through the air, and Georgia Tech is having success. This time, they're going to go to the main target. Kelly Campbell gets an inside burst, comes back to the outside, and again, recognize that the football is in the air before Kelly Campbell makes his cut. And he was reading Tony O's body, and he leaned one way, he cut the other way. That's why that worked. Here is Gotsi. To Glover. Lost the ball, and it's recovered by Tech for a touchdown. <laughs> Joe Burns followed the play and recovered the Glover fumble. It should be Burns credited with the touchdown. Kelly Campbell was shaken up in the scramble for the ball. 14-6, and Luke Manje, who has an ACC record, 113 consecutive extra points. Makes it 114, and we have a seven-point game. Interesting about Manje, you know, he did miss an extra point at Syracuse. Yes, he did. It but a there penalty. was a penalty, he got to do it over again. They caught a break here, threw the football all the way down the field. George Gotzi makes the throw. Glover reaches, comes up short, and Burns is there to make a big touchdown. And Tech getting right back in this game. Back with you from Atlanta on College Football Thursday night, presented by Circuit City. Georgia Tech, it was so difficult for them to get on the board, and they almost turned it over at the one. Recover the fumble in the end zone. Seven-point game. Manje kicks returnable for Rich Carson. Oh, he's got a seam on the outside. Held up and brought down at the 20-yard line. Return of 18 yards. What a very good special teams play by Marvius Hester. Marker is down on the play as well. They look at Kelly Campbell, who was hurt in the scramble for the fumble, as you see the touchdown drive. Oh, extra trigger activities, Jamal Chance from Maryland, with about eight Georgia Tech players on the sideline of Georgia Tech. We'll see if it's going to go both ways. At the ways. end of the play, there was a personal foul by the white team, 15 yards, first down. Jamal Chance got right in the middle there, and. Looks like Georgia Tech was, uh, what are the, what's the saying? Giving him the business? Giving him the business. <laughs> ben Dry's old word. Watch Burns here on this touchdown. Well, great hustle by Burns to recognize a loose ball downfield. But Glover makes a play here. He's able to cut up fields, trying to stretch, trying to make something happen. And as he does, the ball comes loose, thankfully, for Georgia Tech. Joe Burns, who wasn't even in the play, hustling down and finds the loose ball in the end zone. The touchdown to the left of the offense. Burns was out to the right on the pass play. Hill, Hennessy through. Incomplete, lucky that that isn't going back the other way for a touchdown, and a marker comes in after the play. Ball's tipped, That's, that will be waved off. Ball 
is tipped, he can't have pass interference. The officials immediately discuss it, and that is the case. The pass was tipped, therefore, there is no penalty. Second down. They're starting to be a little bit more active here. Fox putting the pressure, finally putting a little bit of pressure on Sean Hill instead of just on George Gonson. But you notice, it wasn't one of those defensive ends. They had to bring a linebacker yeah. from the outside. Yeah. Now, one thing I want to say about Maryland, they're 5-0, and oh, but this is the time where you find out if they can answer a challenge yeah. right now. Second and 10, screen set up. Perry. Up the first down across the 45-yard line. He caught eight balls against Virginia, has now 16 catches on the season, and does more than just run and battle injury. The thing did, I think the entire nation is seeing that we're learning more and more about Bruce Perry. He, of course, he leads the nation in rushing yards per game, but tonight you're recognizing that he has tremendous toughness. Doc mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast that he was battling through some injuries, and I'm sure he'll continue to update us on that. But this entire football game, Perry has been reaching and feeling the pain that he's trying to block out of his mind. Nick Rogers out of the game for the moment. First and 10 for Maryland. He'll throw to the tight end, complete to Jeff Dugan at midfield. A pickup of four. Let's check in with Jerry. Adding to what uh, Herbie was saying about Bruce Perry a year ago, Ralph Richardson said Perry st spent his time nicked up a little bit of things in the training room and never was a major factor. This year, he has been nicked up, but he has been playing game after game, carrying the football. At halftime, the sophomore from uh, Philadelphia had his thigh worked on his right thigh. We've got a pretty significant bruise, big ice pack, dealing with a sore hamstring, rib sore, a swollen knee, and now a bruise on the thigh. But he's getting the job done. Guys, see what a second effort runner he is. And he drives the middle and doesn't get much. Coming off the edge, Pierre and Fox, an outstanding game for the sophomore from Atlanta who stepped up. Their leading tackler, but has been a presence. Played as a true freshman last year. Went to the same high school as Keith Adams, the Clemson great linebacker. So imagine those guys in the linebacker tradition at that high school. Defensive coordinator Ted Rowe obviously found out one thing. He's bringing those guys linebackers from the outside because he can't get them up the middle. Maryland's offensive line is doing too good of a job in the inside. Third and six. Tick backs out of man coverage. And a snap. Miscommunication will make it third and long. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yards, and still third down. Ralph Friedman's team third and long coming up, but they don't have to worry about Nick Rogers, at least for the rest of this series. You see him over on the sideline being worked on by the medical staff at Georgia Tech. Maryland's a team that likes to drop three and five steps and get rid of the football. They very rarely will drop back in the pocket and wait. Here on third and 11 for Williams. Triple cover incomplete. The zone reacted as that ball was up there for a while. And Tech's defense continues to build the enthusiasm for the home team. And that was the same area that Maryland was beaten cover two in the first half. And our guy, Jeremy Myers, has made the adjustment from Coach Ted Roof that they're now double covering, doing a lot better in that seam area. Rogers off to the locker room to look at. Brooks Bernard try to give Georgia Tech a long field. Kelly Rhino back to receive. 49 yard kick. Rhino dropped it. Now picked it up. And returns it to the 14. It took a huge hit from Tony Jackson in the back as Chance was holding him up. First down pass, Godsey is incomplete, intended for Kelly Campbell. While you mentioned Florida, our guys at halftime had that PCS projected on Brad Edwards. They had Oklahoma number one, Florida two, Miami 13. Some people Just wondered. Projecting. Some people wondered Miami why. What? 13. That's what they had at halftime. I saw it. 13. Yes, sir. Projected BCS. Projected BCS. The actual BCS will not come out for another week plus. Yeah. It was going to come out Monday, but it's been pushed back one more week. 
explain why in a moment. Godsey hit from behind and brought down Duran Roundtree. Third sack of the season for Roundtree. Third sack of the night for the Terrapin defense. Duran Roundtree is the strongest lineman they've had in Maryland since that Randy White kind guy. 6'3", 260 from Baltimore, Maryland. He comes from the outside and beats the freshman tackle, Nate Dorsey. Now, Dorsey's going to be a great football player, but he's only a freshman. That's, and I'll tell you what. That's asking, Roundtree. That's asking a lot for a true freshman. Oh, yeah. To hold up against Roundtree. Third and 17. They rush only three. Watkins dropped it. Time Just to finish up the point about the BCS, yes. John Swafford, the commissioner of the ACC, who's handling the administration of the BCS this year, uh, spoke to him before the game, and the point was made with the week of lost games, plus the BCS final poll, which decides who plays in the one against two game, pushed back one week from where it was supposed to be announced. There isn't enough of a sample. The sample's too thin to do it now. That's Very why good. they're pushing it back a week. The first BCS poll will come out in nine days. I don't care if it comes out after week one. How can Miami be 13? Well, we're going to have to call Brad Edwards, our ace guy who knows more about that than that almost anybody in the world. Does Troy, does Troy State drop you to 13? Dan Dyke with the punt. Fair punt. Great field position in the 42 for Gary. You know, Maryland <laughs> never even dreamed of talking words BCS or any sort of a title. And Maryland has won an average of four games a year the last 15. They've already won five. They're leading here on the way to a possible sixth win. I know Fresno's had a great turnaround. Washington State's been terrific. Well, yeah. This These is guys. right up there, guys, don't uh, you think? If Maryland wins tonight, I think the whole nation starts to believe in this football team. They've got to go to Florida State, which will be a tough assignment. Yep. But I tell you what, I like Maryland's attitude because they're still aggressive. They got the ball again in good field position. They're playing hard. The greatest compliment you can play for a coach, say for a coach, is his team plays hard. And they're playing hard for Ralph Friedman. From the 41, it is Perry. Georgia Tech is punishing the man who came in leading the nation in rushing yards per game. Myers made the tackle, and Jerry has an update on Georgia Tech's defensive end, Nick Rogers. And Michael uh, Cramps, we're seeing more and more cramps here on the sidelines. A redshirt senior record-setting defensive end, Nick Rogers, has gone to the Georgia Tech locker room for fluids. I would expect that would be IV fluids, trying to get him hydrated, get the cramps to go away. It's back up in the game, a freshman, Tony Harbro. Number 44 from Florida. Hills pass to Jafar Williams to the 37. You saw Chris Young try to strip it away. If Jerry's still there, Doc, I have a question. Does a short, it's a cool night here. Does a short week at all have an impact on players cramping up in the third quarter after halftime? You know, it's interesting, Mike. Uh, we, we're seeing cramps on both sides, and uh, I think it may have a little bit of an impact with what, what we're seeing here. It isn't, it isn't humid. Uh, it isn't very warm here, but I think it has been cool early in the week, and now these players have are really laying the line. It is a very intense football game there. A lot of hitting from the get-go. And I think emotion has a lot to do with that. Thank you, guys. Third and five. Option. Flag, no play. Perhaps delay of game as we watch the clock go down. Third and five will become third and ten. Delay of game by the offense. Five yards. Still third down. Well, again, if you were just joining us, Ralph Friedgen has okay. spent plenty of time in this stadium, but on the other sideline as the offensive coordinator, first with Bobby Ross and then with George O'Leary for the last four years. They're close friends. About an hour and a half from here, they have on the same lake in uh, Lake Oconee vacation homes. They vacation together during the summer. The head to head here tonight. Hills pass. It is intercepted. Marvius Hester's second on the season. Guys, again, Maryland has a, a an offense that relies on the timing patterns because they don't like the protection of the deep drops. Here, five-step drop, 
One hitch, throw the football. Hester baited Gary the entire time, stepping back, stepping back, hoping that Sean Hill would throw the football and stepped up and made the play. First down pass, incomplete. Intended for Burns. The official got in the way that time. The umpire. The umpire got right in the way of Burns trying to catch that football. So Hill and Maryland have now turned it over a couple of times. And there you see the seniors numbers. Sean Hill and George Godsey are equaling their season INT totals tonight. Some of the familiarity both teams have with each other. This pass is complete to Smith at the 41. Pick up a five, 35 coming up. And Godsey and Hill each had three INTs for the season coming in. George has thrown three, although one wasn't his fault. Sean Hill has thrown two, and as we mentioned, they're running the same offense. They all know uh, what each other does here. Hill's back up with Trez Harrison, just staying loose. The Atlanta native. Flags come down for the snap. I think the left tackle that time, Nate Dorsey, jumped early. The reason he did is because that last sack that he gave up to Roundtree. Prior to the snap, there was a false start by the offense. That's five yards, and it's still third down. Well, there's no hiding Dorsey when he makes a move. Oh. He has size 17 cleats. Third down and 10. Can't hide a size 17 shoe. 6'6", 315 for New Orleans. And remember, when Bill O'Brien says that Georgia Tech rarely gets that kind of a great football player here. And we got him. True freshman playing the left tackle spot. So now it's third and ten. Godsey. Pass is caught. Oh. Kerry Watkins saw Ty Stewart not turn to the ball. And Tech has it at the Maryland 32. Now, Kerry Watkins, every six or seven times he touches the football, he gets a touchdown. This is a sensational pass, but more importantly, look at that concentration, Kirk. He went up, caught it at his highest point with his hands. Isn't that a great looking catch by Watkins? Final minute, third quarter. Incomplete for Campbell. Pass intended for number six. This is second and ten. Joe Burns. Haven't seen much of him in this quarter, and he runs for seven yards. That's just the second running play out of the 22 offensive plays for Georgia Tech this quarter. Here Georgia Tech just challenged them up front. This is a simple play. Two tight ends. Isolation up front. Need a big block from the fullback here. Redshirt freshman Jonathan Jackson. I don't know if he had a great block, but at least he got in the way of EJ Henderson <laughs> to open up the hole for Joe Burns. And that, of three. Three. Oh, no, he's, go ahead, he's that redshirt freshman, yes. 6'2, 225 from Jacksonville Bowles that could be a great prospect here. O'Leary's team, the only touchdown, and off we go to the fourth quarter. Two friends going head to head, trying to get their offenses to perform better in the final 15. Off we go to the fourth quarter of College Football Thursday night presented by Circuit City. With Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, and Dr. Jerry Punch, Mike Tirico. Two top 20 teams going head to head. Maryland trying to beat a top 20 team for the first time, top 25 team, the first time in 34 tries. George Godsey's had excellent numbers in the fourth quarter in his career and very good this season, including the Clemson game that went into overtime. We start with third and about three. And Ralph Regan sees his old offense go four wide. Dodge has got a pocket. Got a first down with Smith. Smith, hey, touchdown! Lou 
Luke Manje on for the tying extra point. 115 in a row. New game at 14. On this one, number 82, Jonathan Smith will start to the outside and cut back, and he catches the ball. One thing about this guy, remember, he's a great all-around athlete. He averages 38 points a game for the high school star. Now, Kirk, take it from there. Watch this play. This is an outstanding play. Great call. It's man coverage. It's called a rub route. It's almost like a pick. The big tight end, Will Farrell, is going to slow down right here. Pick his man, or we'll call it politically correct, a rub route. And look at the speed. Once Jonathan Smith makes the catch, that's why they think this guy could be one of the best receivers that they've ever had at Georgia Tech. And remember, he was also a high school quarterback. Yep. And they said if they ever need a quarterback to be a quarterback that just run the option and everything, it's going to be Jonathan Smith, right? They said in high school he was just one of those athletes that dominated the game. Quarterback, basketball. He, he could probably play basketball at Georgia Tech. He averaged 38 Eight. points a game in high school basketball to give you an idea of how athletic Jonathan Smith really is. With the injury to Nate Curry this year, Smith has earned the play time and stepped up. That is second touchdown, a 25 yarder. Maryland had a 14 0 lead. It's now 14 14 with a whole quarter to go. And remember, I mentioned good football team's answer. So far, Maryland has not answered the Georgia Tech onslaught. They've got to stop it right here and answer with something. Monjay kicks, Rich Carson a return. Very congested on that right side and taken to the 20. Football's a game of momentum, and right now it's heading towards Georgia Tech. Lee mentioned, can they answer? It's one thing to answer, it's another thing when a team scores 14 unanswered points. The entire crowd in the stadium and the team. It's a totally different atmosphere in this stadium right now. But good football teams do answer. There's then 10 for Sean Hill and the Maryland offense sluggish in the third quarter. Keeping nobody to pitch to. Lost spot. That's Ricardo Winbush again. <laughs> Tech's crowding the line of scrimmage and trying to make Sean Hill beat them. Look how tight they are. Reed dive first. Now they're coming to the quarterback. I think it's a mix up in the yeah, backfield with Maryland. Second time Sean Hill hasn't had a pitch back when he's run the option. They lost three. No tight end here. Three receivers, two backs, five in the pattern. They're all covered. Hill's got nobody running over there with them. He runs out of bounds. And a flag is thrown. That's Rogers, who was out, went into the locker room to get an IV, get some fluids in him. There's no broad white sideline stripe over there that you have in the bench area. Tougher to pick out the sideline. First down, Maryland. Well, once Hill broke out of the pocket and looked off to the right, he didn't have a receiver even anywhere on that side of the field. It was pretty obvious he was going to run. I want to see. Boy, that's really a tough call. Nick Rogers is coming at full momentum. By the time he got his hands around yeah. the quarterback, he was still in bounds. Not only that, he rode him down. He didn't throw him down. That was a very poor call by that official. First and 10, Maryland. They're at the 36. Perry inside. Couple of yards trying to run behind Lamar Bryant, his sophomore right guard. Think about this, guys. The five turnovers for Georgia Tech. You have twice they've they've uh, been penalized for unsportsmanlike conduct, 15 15 yard penalties. Think about all the mistakes they've made, and yet 14, 14, 13 and a half minutes to go in the game. And their defense has only given up seven points because the first touchdown came on a fumble recovery. Play pass. Hill looking for Julian Gary at the 45 of Georgia Tech. First well, down. I got to show you guys an unbelievable route. 
Watch this Julian Gary. He'll go down and break it to the inside with like a fake to the post and then run a post corner. Now keep your eye right there on Gary, number 21. Watch, look at that. Turn and roll out. Oh, that's a perfect pass and a great route by Julian Gary. Nice play. Gary was hurt the week before the opening game, but has come back and played well. Looking for the home run with Williams, but he was well covered. And that pass was never in danger of being completed. For number 19, Jafar Williams. Jeremy Myers defending. And respect the fact that Maryland is not pulling their horns in and being conservative here with the crowd getting into the game. To get a first down, they come right back and go for the juggler off the option pass, looking for the deep one. Out of the gun, second and ten. Quarterback draw with Hill. Now out to the 40. Third and about five coming up. Jerry? Guys, really interesting. Ted Roof a moment ago told his defensive secondary, if we get third and five or more, third and long, we're going to gamble. We're going to bring the pressure because uh, you guys are going to be on an island. Man coverage back there. We're going to bring the pressure. We have got to get the shot heel. Guys, third and five. Let's see what he does. All right. We have three receivers. Let's watch Fox here. Here they come. Whistles blow. And it will be third and longer. That's a dead ball foul. Ball start by the offense. Five yards and it's still third down. Do you still bring the heat now, guys? I wouldn't. I'll tell you why I wouldn't, because there was a guy wide open, isolated on the linebacker, the tight end. If he'd had time, it would have been all over. And also, Maryland is a team that they rely on throwing the ball short to intermediate. Exactly. I would, I would put my corners in a position to make them get them up tight and make them throw the football behind them. And I'd make sure they cover that post corner route with those safeties. Stepped up, couldn't get away from Rogers. Fine time for Tech's first sack of the season, of the night, excuse me. That great gathers the other defensive end, slow and limping. Brooks Bernard is on to punt. About 30% of his punts, he's pinned the opponent inside the 20 this year. <laughs> Kelly Rhino let it bounce. Touchback. Drive will start from the 20. Nick Rogers left earlier. Needed to get some fluids in him. Has uh, done a good job getting back in the game. Former tailback got into the backfield to get the quarterback that time. Maryland has never won in Atlanta. 0-6, five of those losses by 18 or more. Very rarely are in this situation. Close to Georgia Tech in Atlanta. All tied at 14. Gotsi who's getting hot. Incomplete. Intended for Sydney Ford. Back up tailback out of the backfield. Talked about the importance of Georgia Tech opening things up in their last couple touchdown drives. Look at this. They've been able to run the football just a couple times, throwing it 14. It's pretty apparent that they've seen that the aggressive style of Gary Blackney, one way to try to attack it to have any kind of success is throw the football. Second and 10. Little jump pass to Burns. Big stick by E.J. Henderson after a gain of nine. Third and one ahead. One thing about E.J. Henderson, he's consistent. He has led the Terps in tackles in four of their five ball games. So he is obviously the main player on that football team, and he does look like one of those.
Falco over linebackers, Florida State linebackers are the ones that we've been seeing in person. He good. He's a good-looking football player. No stranger to Tech, 18 tackles against the Yellow Jackets last year. Third and one, they're on Burns. Should be right at the mark for a first down. Forward progress to the 30. When you start a drive at the 20, all you got to do is touch that white stripe, or in this case, yellow stripe. And it's a first down. No Inter need to measure. Interesting, Mike and Kirk. That's exactly the same play that they fumbled yes. that Henderson picked up and scored. So obviously that was their short yardage play that they decided during practice. Short, short, short yardage play. I, yeah. I don't know if I recommend going back to that one again. Well, but that's Fumble what they did. It, I, yeah. yeah, I know. Yeah. They had six inches yeah. there. Burns has only run it a couple of times this half. Just a second count. Smith in motion, a little more on the ground. Burns got out of the first tackle and got another first down to the 46-yard line. 16 yards for the junior. I think Joe Burns is one of the more underrated backs in college football. He has so much versatility. Mike, you mentioned he could be a tailback, he could be a fullback, the motion him out. Look how hard he runs with his football. He broke about five tackles on that one carry to pick up the first down there. Keeps his legs running. He's a tough, tough running back. We're in the process of getting set up for play action here. God, see to Matt Bay, the tight end. Eight yards, and this looks like the Georgia Tech yes, offense. So it's a hit, hitting behind the play, knocked out a couple of coaches on the sideline there. That's a good call, Mike. And let me tell you another reason why Burns is running so fast. And hard is because the point that Kirk broke up made up. He only ran the ball twice, so he's rested. It isn't like these backs are going to keep running, keep running, keep running, get tired. This young man is ready to go and run the football. Now they could use more balance in their attack right now. Yeah, you guys are right. More balance. And, and all of a sudden, Mike, you made a good point as well. You feel the rhythm now of the Georgia Tech offense that we've seen for years. Second in the yard. Sydney Ford, the junior, into the boundary. Big hit by Carone Cox in the corner, but that's a first down. First and ten. Godsey pumping, and now looking long. It's incomplete. Godsey's footwork again, a little awkward. Can't seem to get his feet underneath, and it's tough to be accurate with the throw. A lot of that has to do with the pressure from Maryland. Seems like he's back there. As soon as he pump fakes, he's he's trying to just buy time because of the pressure from Maryland. You saw that brace on Georgia's leg tore his ACL in the Georgia Dome in the uh, Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl game against Clemson. We asked him about it, and he said, I keep pulling that brace up all the time, always slipping down on me, and I asked him about cutting, and he said, no, I'm comfortable cutting. But it took me a while to make sure I was comfortable. Sidney Ford with the carry for a couple of yards. Plus, you lose style points, too. With the big brace. brace. The quarterback. Jerry? Yeah, you mentioned that they operated on uh, George Gotzi's left knee, left ACL repair in the final four minutes of the Peach Bowl last year. And, and Gotzi doesn't like wearing the brace. In fact, the, the knee is actually stronger than the other knee. He wears it for protection. And I asked one of the docs, I said, why, why the brace? He said, well, it's not like we're taking his speed away. We really didn't have any to start with, so we're just going to protect the knee. So uh, that was cold, very uh, cold. I said Clemson, I beg your pardon. LSU is the team they played in the Peach Bowl. Third and seven. That's cut. They're going to mark him for the first down at the 31-yard line, too. Will Glover, again, they went to the same high school in Tampa, Florida, Jesuit High School. I want to tell you about a well-coached receiver. That receiver went two yards behind the first down and then came back to the ball. I've seen it a hundred times that these receivers go short. This is a perfect example. Now watch Glover. He'll drive down. He knows where the first down is. He goes two yards, comes back. Look, when he comes back, he separates from the defensive back. That's why that play worked. It's a heck of a spot, too. Oh. <laughs> first and 10 for the 31. Four first downs on this drive. Burns got out of the tackle and keeps going to the 27-yard line. Leon Joe said hello, and Burns said goodbye. Again, Jonathan Jackson leading the way up front. You can see the Georgia Tech players starting to taste it. Getting closer and closer. Remember we talked to, to George O'Leary? This is George O'Leary's football. That passing stuff is nice, and they better work. 
But when you get down in there, as he said to hey, the Doc Bunch, we better push this one in and get it in there, run it in there. Boy, is he tough coach. Charles Hill is down and shaken up for Maryland, perhaps cramping as well. And it's exactly what is his situation. They look at the nose man from Palmer Park, Maryland, Baltimore suburb. Most experience on this uh, front line, the most consistent defensive lineman. We're all even at 14 with 8.20 left. Here is our Miller High Life storyline tonight. Seven turnovers in this game, five by Georgia Tech. George Godsey's numbers keep getting better. It doesn't look like he's had a 300 yard passing game, but he's getting there. Tech, as you see, has mainly thrown the ball on scoring drives. But in the second half, Georgia Tech's offense is taking over. Remember, this is an offense that Ralph Friedgen designed, was the coordinator of for four years. And he's, he said something very interesting. He said, I put on the film to watch Georgia Tech, and I'm watching my offense. And I'm watching my offense score 70 against Navy and 44 in the loss to Clemson, 37 against Duke. And I'm also coaching against my friend, George O'Leary. They've known each other for 20 years since they were recruiting in New York together. Sharing a meal because O'Leary had a better budget to eat on the road while recruiting. Gotsy is sacked. That's Randy Starks and Duran Roundtree and Michael Whaley and the fourth sack of the night for Maryland. The important part about that sack is it took him out of field goal range and the wind is blowing in the face. They collapsed the pocket round. Got see he didn't get a chance to throw it up, but I would right now make sure that I get enough of a pass completion, Kirk, that I could kick a field goal if necessary. I wouldn't go for the whole thing. I wouldn't go for the touchdown. Great play by the freshman Starks there. Manje's long field goal career is 47 yards. From here it would be a 52-yarder. Godsey's toss it is caught, shy of the first down, but there you go, coach. Kelly Campbell's reception will make it a 39-40 yard field goal attempt. Now most of the time I would go for it, but right now I would try to win the game with a field goal because my defense is playing so well. Now he might go for it, and that's fine, but I'm telling you, I would kick the field goal and get ahead 17-14. We're gonna go for it. Okay, good. I'm first guessing. Never, never second guess. Yeah, no second guess, know, guys. First guess. Thursday night, it's all about first guess. Right? That's right. Tex made a couple of fourth downs tonight. Trying to draw them off. Yep, that's exactly what they're doing. They're going for the field goal. Godsey takes the timeout. When we come back, likely a field goal attempt to put Georgia Tech ahead. They've missed one from the right hash already tonight. Now Luke Manje will come on to try a 40-yard field goal. Music aficionado plays guitar, violin, banjo, and the mandolin. With sweet music for Georgia Tech to put them ahead 17-14. Manje the field goal to put him on top. Out of the hold of Hal Higgins. What a story this kid is. His first year back playing, he was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease a couple of years ago. In the hospital, when they were first diagnosing his illness, he told his dad he didn't think he was going to make it through the night. Had 105 fever. They diagnosed it. 14 sessions of chemotherapy ended in December of 99. He worked around the football office last year, had a 4-0 GPA, came back to the team, was a punter, a backup punter. They got him in as a holder. He's done a great job holding this year. And as we know, the snap holding kicker equally is important. But Hal Higgins has done his job on the field, and what a thrill it is for Hal to be on the field and to be a part what of this team. Great story. Yeah. It's a great. great story, a very important part. Interesting part about that drive, Mike. With 58 yards, five runs, seven passes. Nice balance yes. to get that field goal. After all the passes. Exactly. On the other two scoring drives. The they, got him, they got to loosen up, got to loosen up, then they ran. Well, let's see what Maryland can do here because its offense has scored just once despite being in Georgia Tech territory six times tonight. Remember, the defense is the other score. They have a long 80 yard drive to try to mount as Rich Carson catches it for a touchback. 
from the 20. Hill starts with play action. Nearly intercepted. Ricardo Winbush was covering the fullback James Lynch. And Hill slow to get up. Now, this time, the quarterback did get hit. I made a mistake on that last one, but I'm telling you. <laughs> this time you promise? I promise you, Sean Hill got hit. Now, remember I made a mistake before, but watch this one. Up. I you got, got it right. One. You got I got one out of two. That's 50%. Greg Gathers hit him. Boy, it's almost like seeing a different defense the way Georgia it. Tech is flying around right now. Second and ten. Pass is caught by Jafar Williams. Five to the 25. Marvius Hester with the coverage. Remember what Jerry told us guys coming out of the locker room at halftime? Ted Roof, the defensive coordinator, his fourth year here. Change the philosophy. No switching around. We're going to stay. Call it and stay in that defense. And they have played better. Is that a reason? Yeah, they've Absolutely. been in the lock in. You're, you haven't seen a mental mistake since Don told us about that report. And since Georgia Tech has been sitting in their defense and not trying to outthink themselves. Paralysis through analysis. You could hit people when you start thinking too much on defense. Third and five. Will they bring it? Pressure coming. Hill gets away. And throws complete to the 34 and Jafar Williams. That's a good hard throw on the run. Nice play. Sean Hill, I think, continues to impress all of us up here watching. A lot of pressure on that third down. He felt the pressure coming up the middle. Gathers also coming from the outside. He's able to avoid that pressure, not only avoid it, right when it looked like he was just going to throw it away, he finds his open man, Jafar Williams. The way this game is going, this may be the second to last or last opportunity for Maryland with the ball. The 34, pump and go long. Now go down. Hill is sacked by Gathers. Moving Greg gathers all around. Harry moves from the outside, comes down into the inside as a defensive end, and that stunt confused Maryland up front, and he came scot free. Second and 18. The clock is going downhill really fast. Four and a half to go. Pressure set again. This time Rogers. What happens a lot of times when you get in the fourth quarter, that offensive le left tackle, C.J. Brooks. Remember I told you what a great job he was doing? 6'5", 3'11". He's getting tired. He's getting tired, and his feet quit moving. You notice the reason why Gathers got around him that time <laughs> is old Brooks couldn't move his feet fast enough. Athlete. Yeah. Athlete got around him. Nick Rogers is a tremendous athlete. C.J. Brooks, a redshirt freshman. Yeah. Got, got, a, got, a, got a lesson there. Third and a quarter of the field. Will they try a screen to get some back? With Perry, got one block. Not going to go anywhere else. Hit hard at the 25 by Fred Wright. Backup defensive tackle. Maryland will punch it away with 3.30 to go. Georgia Tech numerically has played well all night. But we're seeing a different defense right now. They haven't applied this kind of pressure on Sean Hill the entire evening. They're playing at a different level, different intensity level. That one got back there, waffling to Brooks Bernard. Gets off a good kick. Rhino the 27. Jerome Cox hit him. And got some company to pull him down at the 45-yard line. The punt was 48. The return was 8. Georgia Tech's defense has gotten the job done. 3.02 to go. Tech by three. 18 remaining unbeaten in Division 1A. Maryland is one of the two that have matched or exceeded the win total from last year. That's why Ralph Fried is getting so much attention and credit. Going up against his best buddy in coaching, George O'Leary. They've known each other for 20 years. They battle here for the next three minutes. Burns a first down run. Kept going, got five to the 40. 
Now, I'm not second guessing, but I'm first guessing. I'm telling you, if I was Georgia Tech, I would not throw the football. I would force Maryland to use their three timeouts. I would not have a chance for a turnover. All backs running with carries hold two hands. Then I'd punt it, and I'd let that defense you talk about play with yep. the long field. I just would took not the first time out. Yeah, the first I'd make time them out. use three. See, and then I sure. would, whatever they do, don't throw the football. I don't care what. Just keep putting the football in the hands of number 35. <laughs> 35 knows what to do with it. Finish the thought of Ralph Region and the turnaround here at Maryland. 18 remaining Division I unbeaten, 1A. Maryland has equaled last year's win total with five. Washington State has exceeded the win total from last year. Cougars won four. They are 5-0 and as well. But it's really an impressive turnaround because, as I mentioned, 17 starters came back. It wasn't like there were, you know, a whole bunch of players who were sitting around who hadn't been here before. And all the little things are starting to add up. And I don't mean this disrespectfully. You have to remember that Ron Vanderlinden, who was the coach here, did recruit these guys. So they did a good job of identifying talent, getting them to College Park. Whatever was missing, these ingredients of this coaching staff have come together and have put Maryland in line for a bowl game this year. You know, if Maryland ends up losing this football game, the way they played tonight, they can still walk out of here with a lot of confidence for the rest of the year in the ACC. Second and six. Burns is hit by Henderson. Maryland takes the quick timeout. Here would be 2.43 mark. We lost a few yards. It's third and seven. Third and eight, actually, coming up. Third and eight. They need to get to the 46. Will they throw? Oh, they will. Quick pass. Up by Glover. First down. I tell you what. That, ladies and gentlemen, was a magnificent call going against percentages. If that thing would have popped up and they fell and they got it, it would have been all over. That was one sensational call by Bill O'Brien and George O'Leary. Great call, great execution. Oh. Oh. We've seen this route all night long. It's man coverage. Again, it's a pick. pick. It's a pick route. <laughs> We're going to call it a rope route. We're going to see these guys oh. in a couple weeks. That's a rope route. <laughs> <laughs> it came underneath there. And, Picked up the first oh, down. Good call, man. coach. Maryland, one timeout left. And Georgia Tech is a first down away from closing this out. Burns gets nothing. Terrapins will take the timeout here at the 2.08 mark. Step out for a half minute. Second and 10 when you come back. Back in Atlanta, Ralph Friesen, the architect of this Georgia Tech offense that was really cruising along with Joe Hamilton. George Godsey picked up right where it left off last year. Well, this offense in the second half has gone with a lot of passing because they couldn't establish a run. What they've done is they've kept the ball away from Maryland. The defense has helped a lot. But in this game, Georgia Tech has run 80 plays to Maryland 62. And you wouldn't have thought that by watching the first 20 minutes of the game right about that and, and I think Georgia Tech fans remember you go back to the beginning of the game they're booing the offense and Bill O'Brien need to have patience with Bill O'Brien first time he's had to call plays here at Georgia Tech he's going to just keep getting better and better second down the play pass actually just got to keeper and he is taken down by the freshman Randy Starks Maryland out of timeouts so the clock will run Of all the plays Bill O'Brien called today, that last pass play was brilliant call. You see, the clock is stopping here. The what officials from the back came up here. Because it didn't start. Didn't start on time properly? Exactly. Okay. It Fans. got stuck. Yeah. And that usually doesn't happen at home. It usually happens when you're on the road. That clock operator is your best friend. Please change the clock to reflect one minute, 59 yep. seconds. Seven seconds. Knock it's it enough. Down. Seven seconds is yeah. enough. Knock it down. Clock operator, his buddies are free. Trying to help out his old buddy. <laughs> better not be, or he won't be working Choking. on the clock next week. And now they reset it and wind it uh, with the 25 second play clock. So this play will have to be snapped at the 133 mark. Georgia Tech just hit in the huddle. They call quick days. plays. Maryland with defensive confusion. 
with 11 on the field here. Burns, left side. Go down, don't get that sideline. Oh. 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 Yeah. Don't no. come running off by George O'Leary either. No. But Joe Burns has had a very good night. But he's trying to get those him. extra yards. Look at George. Now the offensive line should protect their running back right now. See, what they did is they, they lost 30 seconds there. Sure oh. did. At least. At least 30. Yeah. So, I mean, that is absolutely a disaster. Okay. Look at him. Run. Hey, he patted him on the back. All right, we'll take care of that. <laughs> As a coach, is this is this the time of the game? That just... No, it's... Do you go after the punt? Oh, absolutely. You have to. You have to. Maryland's blocked two this year. Good punt protection. Julian Gary let it bounce. 80 yards, no timeout, 78 seconds. Can you do it? We'll find out with Sean Hill. Like you mentioned, 80 yards. 80 yards get you a win. That's it, thank you. They get, you know, maybe they pick up uh, 60 yards. Uh, 50 yards. Well, I've that, seen that, Maryland I've twice seen already this kicker. year. Get a shot. No, no, no. Count on them not no, kicking no, no, a field no. goal. That's right. You never know. You never know. <laughs> Novak has kicked nothing. In fact, the That's last right. time they had a chance to kick a field goal, they faked it. That's yeah. not a good sign. Gary is their possession receiver. Jafar Williams, number 19, is their receiver that can get upfield. Tech rushes three, covers with eight. Pass is caught by Jafar Williams. Didn't get a first down. Clock runs. This is where a Ralph Regent team usually is well schooled. See how they can operate here. They stopped it because the referee had a check if it was a first down or not. The umpire shouldn't stand over the ball. You, you don't need to be there. The clock was wrong. They didn't start the play clock. Had wasted seven seconds on the officials. Horrible job. Pass caught first down. Clock will stop at the 35. Make sure when you're at home, you're not supposed to have. Maybe, maybe the guys running the clock's friends with Ralph Regan. That's days what I said. Attack. He's moving to Maryland next week, though. Yeah. That was the officials. They were waiting to start yeah. the play clock, but the game clock was wrong. Yeah, comes my guy. From the 35, Perry needs to get out of bounds. Gained only a yard. Stops the clock with 40 seconds. Again, oh, three-man rush. Uh oh down to the 46 to Julian Gary. Clock stops. 33 seconds. Nice throw by Hill there. Oh. The gathers was right in his face. That was a beautiful pass. See, here they go. Clock stops. Lined up. Everything's done perfectly here. Up to the 46. Hill moves to his right. Got to get rid of it. Threw it away. And incomplete. 22 seconds left. Now, the interesting thing here for coaching the quarterbacks, that if he does complete a long pass, it's a first down, they need to snap the ball and throw it down to stop the clock. Because remember, they have no timeouts. So if they complete a pass for the first down, line up, throw it down, and then make a decision what kind of play you want to use. Realistically, 20 more yards gives him a shot. Yeah. And a field goal. Sure. Novak has the leg. He's just young and has no confidence right now. Four-man rush this time. Incomplete. 15 seconds left. Maryland sits atop the ACC, a place they haven't been in a very long time, with a 3-0 conference record. But as you see, six teams are lined up with one loss there. So if Georgia Tech hangs on, we're going to have seven teams with one loss in the conference. Two weeks, we get a chance to see North, North Carolina, Carolina and Georgia right, yeah. Tech. Yeah, this would be another great ACC game here on Thursday night. Remember, if, if, if they get close enough, it is a field goal with the win. That's right, they slight wind in his back. Slight wind in his back. That gives him an extra five or ten yards. Fifteen seconds left. Hill needs to hit one downfield. It's complete for a first down at the 28. So Rich Parson, the freshman, seven seconds now left. Now you're going to fire the ball into the ground. Fire the Kill ball the into the ground. Fire it into the ground and kick your field goal. See, see how quick the offensive line is set yeah, up? They, they're well coached. Yeah, they really are. Dropped it back to the 29-yard line. Wound ready for play. Down the ball, five seconds left. From here, it's well, a 46-yard field goal. He's got to try it. Yeah. And on comes Nick Novak, who won the job from the senior, Vidad Silkovic. He 
said he has to make them from 40 yards and in. He has the leg to make it from there. This one's a little bit long. Applaud the job there by Sean Hill in the terms oh. of their offense. Remember what Nick Rogers and Greg Gathers had done the previous series and how dominating they were. That was That's big right. time to just to give Maryland a chance here at this 46-yard field goal. Uh, they'll they'll, they'll like freeze them. Yep. I didn't think they could do it. I got You got to give them credit for the offensive line, as you said. But now you know what's going to happen. Everybody's going to second guess Ted Roof from playing the old Ben, 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 ben defense. Yeah. Nickel prevent. Right? Why weren't you doing the same thing you do? I, it's damned if you do, damned if you don't. You see Ralph Friedge in there. Here's what Ralph told me last night about Nick Novak. He said. The kicker, I've been giving him grief. Come on, you got to do, you got to get it done. You got to make put pressure on him in practice. Made them do up down drills if their timing wasn't good enough. Yeah. And then Ralph said, you know what, I got to lay off the kid a little bit. He kicked better against Wake Forest, better against Virginia. So Novak, on Wednesday night at dinner, said to Fridge, Coach, how come you're not giving me grief anymore? And Ralph said, Well, maybe I need to just leave you alone because I was giving you grief and you weren't kicking well. You performed better. So now I'm going to leave you alone. You know what? Kickers are like relief oh, yeah. pitchers. You, you get their psyche. They're, they're so sensitive. You have to be careful with them. This was his earlier attempt from 32 yards on the right hash. Now remember, on this kind of a field goal, you need to rush in the middle and try to block it because a field goal kicker, sidewinder, that's kicking a long one has a tendency to kick it low. So if they block this kick, they'll block it up the middle. See all those linemen, all the gladiators who've been battling for four quarters. Now you're lying a kicker to try to tie the game for 46 yards. On line, and it is good! And we are going overtime! What a kick! Something you usually don't see from him. Maryland ball first. To start our first OT. Pick up first downs like a drive. We'll start with the option with Hill. Nothing. That's Mitchell who was a fullback last week because of injury to Daryl Smith and Aether Brown who's the starting middle linebacker and has played here tonight. Although Bruce Perry's dinged up tonight. I think they try to get the football in his hands whether he's slipping out of the backfield maybe in one on one coverage. Or, they, or they've had a lot of success throwing the football to Gary. Yeah, well. but don't forget that reverse play somewhere there. They scored a touchdown with that reverse play. Second down. Maybe we'll use that wide side of the field here with a throw. Here is Hill throwing. Complete to the 11-yard line. Julian Gary, first down. They can pick up another first down at the one. Gary comes into tonight's game, their leading receiver, and he doesn't have big playability, lightning speed, but I'll tell you what he does have is a savvy to find a hole in zone coverage. He's done it time and time again tonight, and he continues to come up with a big catch for the Turks. Then 10, Perry. Has now 18 carries on the night for 49 yards. Mike Good Kirk. This is exactly the same spot where they ran that reverse play off the option for a touchdown. I'll guarantee if I'm towards the tech, I'm watching somebody for some kind of a trick play, especially for the jerk. Exactly the same spot. And you know what? Number one is in the same position as he was. The ring back same position. formation, Lee. Same formation. Second and 11. Terry covered as a receiver. Hill's looking for somebody to break free. Throws it up and out of the back of the end zone. Now third and 11 for the first down. 12 for the touchdown. In Georgia Tech's last game here in Atlanta, two weeks ago against Clemson, they went overtime, and Clemson won it with a touchdown, 47-44, after Tech had the ball first and kicked a field goal. On a quarterback draw. By Woodrow Dantzler. They wouldn't run a quarterback draw. Now, would they? No. Okay. Georgia Tech has lost its last two overtime games, the Clemson game this year, and last year on Thursday Night Football to North Carolina State. Carries up at the top. To Perry. 
made one man miss, couldn't make any more miss. It'll be from the right hash, a 26-yard field goal attempt after Fred Wright's tackle. Now, here's the tough thing for Novak. He just sent the game into overtime. He's a hero. Everybody's coming over, patting him on the back. He's not known for being a consistent kicker. Now he's got to come back. Wait a minute. And I know it's a short kick. I know, wait a minute. But now you're he's got to come back and hit it. That, you, the, you know, no, okay. I'm just saying there's a little what bit. What do you think he's going to make it? I'm not saying if he's going to make it. I'd say I bet you makes it. He's going to make it, all right. Brooks Bernard holds. I mean, right in the middle, right through. I mean, like Jan Steneru. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> All the I torture mean, that Ralph gave him, <laughs> Khalid Nin. I mean, Whatever he's doing, I mean, he's split the, split the right <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> Maryland 20, Georgia Tech 17. What a, game. a field goal sends us to a second overtime. A touchdown wins it. No score. Maryland stays undefeated. I can't believe you guys ever doubted Nova. <laughs> that comes in and kicks the game. Look, all, I'm it's sorry, it's an over 10 to the left. <laughs> but it's end over end every oh, time. Tight. Even the one he Dude. missed, they looked good. Looked the part. All right, let's see what happens now. Yeah, here we go. Tech saw Clemson do the same thing. Kick a field goal for Georgia Tech. Clemson scored when they got the ball and won in overtime on this field two weeks ago. Godsey throw to the tight end, Matt Fay. Three to the 22. Second down coming up. Chris Berman retires from Sports Center as soon as we're done. Post game coverage of this one on ESPN News. You can visit there and then go back to Sports Center if you so choose. Great start to a good college football weekend. And if we've learned anything tonight, that Maryland is a legit team. Absolutely. Second and seven, tight formation. They run Burns. He lost the ball. Maryland wins. They recover the fumble, and the Terrapins are undefeated. Six and zero. Oh. And Ralph Regan comes back to Georgia Tech and wins. The game started with a Joe Burns fumble for touchdown. It ends with a Burns fumble. He ran out of bounds. He had the tough night. And the Maryland Terrapins have won six games after winning five all of last year. Wow. Aaron Thompson made a big stick in there defensively. Move over Fresno State. There's another Cinderella story in college football, and it's the Maryland Terps. Unbelievable effort here by this defense all night long. They gave up some yards in the second half, but when they've had to come up with a big play, they've been able to do it. Fumble, once they recovered it, they knew they had secured the win. There is the hit, and it bounced free. And the sixth turnover of the night, Randell Jones, the old quarterback, fell on it. And Ralph Regan comes back to a place where he coached for nine years, and the alum of Maryland has the Terps at 6-0, a place they haven't seen in more than 15 years. They've guaranteed a winning season and are likely bowl-bound. Final score is Maryland 20, Georgia Tech 17.